Oh. Here is a new box. It is a Nikon D5600 with all the numbers and things behind it that we are going to unbox. Comes in a little kit. Uh, what did we do with the GoPro? Crazy thing. GoPro, don't like it. It didn't do the things you wanted to no, do? No, it didn't. It's yeah. too much of an action camera. It's not for us. Yeah, it didn't have the zoom. This has got some phenomenal zoom. So we're going to unbox the new camera. Mind you, we're still on this. Yeah, we still know nothing about this, but it's uh, more old school, really, isn't it? Uh, oh, that's the extendable lens. That's the thing that you screw onto the camera to make it look like you're a professional. And this is the camera itself. D5600 18 to 55 zoom, which is that thing there. That's the Nikon Lex zoom. Shall open the new camera. I don't know if anyone's there. If you're there, hello. Might not be exciting for you, but it's exciting for us. We're going to take this camera overseas. And we'll try not to make a mess of the box. <laughs> not that I'm exchanging this, because I do know a little bit, but I still have to learn. Battery. Yes, that's one battery. I think we bought another battery, so. Yeah. Two batteries, not sure how long they would last for, but uh, we'll find I never look at paperwork when I unbox something and then I try for hours to try and get through to it and think, What's wrong with this bloody thing? Oh, we have, um, we have the charger, the wall unit charger. Okay, so That's the battery cool. just slips straight in there? Yep, it's quite neat. So that's the charger for the battery. If you've just joined, it's a, I can't remember, a D5600 Nikon camera with a big lens, which we'll show you shortly. That's the camera strap, I guess. Yep. Oh, do you want to just show that um, stand thing? That is, uh, if you hold it up for me. That is going to be when we just put it on a stand. It's got these little legs that spread out, or you can prop it up a bit, put the camera on. That's how it will look. So that's what that is. What did that cost? Uh, uh, Seventy-nine. Yeah, well, we've got uh, a discount. You got a little bit off, and they had no problem taking the GoPro back. The guy just said, "Yeah." We walked in there, looked at these cameras before. He said, "Oh, the GoPro could be the go." No, the and GoPro wasn't. It the, won't. the GoPro wasn't the go for a couple of oldies. Ooh, fancy strap. Look so at that. That's just a wrap around your neck, I guess. Be... Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Uh, a lens. That's the. One small lens, yeah? Yep, that's what I have to learn. So I think I should have got two what's the names. So I didn't have to keep swapping two. No, it'd be the same, couldn't I imagine? No. Do you want to open that lens as well, uh, this box? Because that might. Yeah, I am, I'm getting it. Yeah. Okay, just asking. Don't get your knickers and twists. That's the lens. Actually, grab the camera out first so they can see it. We're talking about a camera and we haven't even seen it yet. There it is. Sure, there's nothing else. And tonight's winner will get the bubble wrap so they can use it as a tension release system. And look, I didn't rip the box. Well done. Look. Okay, well. I'm going to pull the table a bit closer to you so you don't have to stretch. No, because it's Well, it's just hard to film when you're over there, that's all. Well, it's easier to film there. I know, I'll we'll move there in a minute. Okay. Don't be difficult. Righto, jeez. But that is the Nikon. I get the message to spin it around a bit. And uh, it's got some sort of flip out 
Do you want to turn it right round now? Have I got the side bit? That bit flips out, doesn't it, off memory? Yeah, but, like, you're ahead of me. Oh, OK. That's your viewfinder, so you can look at yourself, or you can look at what you... Because that twists, doesn't it? You're a bit close, it? No, yeah. good. See? So if you're so in front of the camera... That way, like, like oh. that way, film. So that's a good three-inch. And if I want to do a selfie... Yep. And it pivots... Yeah, at any angle you like. So that's, and uh, you can put it in that way so you can have it like that looking because that's also uh, yeah, a touch yeah. that's also a touch screen. Yep. Yeah. But when you're not using it, you Yeah, just put it away. Protect it, but you can also look through there. Which no see? one no one can ever looks see? through there. Can you see? <laughs> anyway, that's the D is five six hundred Nikon. And it camera. has a thing for an external mic on one side or the other. Oh, we can get a mic for it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't, see? No. Oh. Well, obviously you didn't because you bought the mic. No, because I wanted to first get all this. All right. I can get the mic eventually. <coughs> do you want to do that other box clean up a bit later because that's boring. I'm just putting this Boring, just this putting stuff. boxes away. Oh, you want to see the action? Shut up. I want to see the big lens. The big, in. big scary lens. I want to open it properly. Factory sealed. I do not want to. Oh, I'm doing a uh, GoFundMe to oh. get a pocket knife. <laughs> Maybe you could do a GoFundMe for how to open a box. Classes. Sure. So I just don't want to wreck it. Right. Okay. Going well there. Yeah. Well, it's like it's live, so expect delays. There we go. Okay. Wow. A lot of reading to be done there. And uh, out she comes. Do 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 do. This is the uh, extended lens, which gives you a zoom of, well, this stuff I'm not really sure, but it's, uh, it's good. There we go. It's good. There's my review. We'll, we will test it out shortly in regards to its ability by going out the back. Yeah, but like, I have to charge the battery first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that could take... Do you want to show how each of those lenses will slip on to the camera that you've hidden? Okay. Take off the, which I imagine is just the protector. Let's come off there. And you see, it's nothing in there. This one is the, this one is the... Uh, oh, the small one, sorry. The standard one, I think you'd call it, wouldn't you? Yeah? Yeah. So it goes on that way? Yeah, well, yeah. I'm not sure. Like, yeah, it would just... I'm under pressure you, here. No, no, you just find an area that it's supposed to go in and it will just screw in gently, clip in. There we go. Do you want to turn that sideways so they can see the extent of that lens? So that lens going... What does that lens actually say? Oh, it's got the zoom there. Just show that again. Because your hand's in the way we can't see well, it. I've got to push that yeah, button to do that. Yeah, that's it. You don't just turn it. You use okay. the button. Okay. Stroppy little bugger, isn't she? No. Just so that's that lens. So what does that lens say normally? As far as its zoom and all that. Uh, Good day, Jack. How you going? Got a new camera. It's a Nikon 5600 series. So is it there? Let me just get in close. Uh... 18 to 55. That's a zoom. Zoom or something. You can tell I'm technically advanced when it comes to these type of things. Just whack her on and turn her on, I say. So that's the smaller lens, which is, if you just stand it up, it's probably about three inches, isn't it, in length? Hang on, I just want to protect it. Yeah, that's off the camera, that one. No, that's, yeah, that's yeah, off the so camera. This is, there we go. That's the lens that you'd normally, you could just buy for the camera. 
And then you got this towering inferno of one. It's a bloody great big thing. And I shall give you the details. So those are the technique. And it's upside down. Why did I know that would be the case? Okay. Hang on. Excuse me while I just... This is macro. I get it now. Yeah. You can use macro. macro. Other macro, words, macro. and here are the easy instructions, so, people. Just I'll just get you to take a screenshot of these. So just uh, me. It's about the same size as an average doona you put on your bed. And on the back, it was all in Chinese, and on the front, it's in English, but it may as well be. Look at that. That's the instructions. Can you believe that? Specification. I'll be under a nine before I finish reading it. Okay. Here we go. Focal length. 70-300 millimetre. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. I think that's about. macro. That's Angle macro. view 22, 55 and 20. Uh, she hasn't got a clue what she's talking about, zoom. by the way. Manual zoom using independent ring or auto focus. Get rid of those. We don't want to know about them. You'll fix them up later. Yeah, Just whack, whack the big one on. We're here for the show, not the paperwork. Oh, shut up. It's a live stream. People expect these things. So that over there is the battery charger. That there. And that is a battery. And then we have another battery. Because we thought we'd better buy two. Nothing worse than cruise around thinking, oh, this is great. We're having a great time. Brrr. Just leave it there so I can have a look right, this time. Because I rushed putting the other one on. You have to do that. Yeah, because people can see it. Yeah, but it's What like... is the point of doing a live stream about a camera and then going, oh, she's just putting a lens on, we'll get back to you? I don't want to see. Just take your time. Don't rush. I am. Don't force it. I'm not. Ooh, do you hear that little kick? There we go. So, look at that. Ooh. That's an extension. Are you happy to see me, or is that just your lens cap coming out? So, you can already how big that camera is, there you go. Up against your head, they can see how big it is. It's not that heavy though, is it? Oh, it's a bit heavy with this Oh thing. yeah, with the big bugger on. Is it working that way? Have a look out the window. That'd be the guy. Just checking out how far the couch is away, which is about 10 feet. Yes, you don't need a camera like that. I need to put that. So have a look at the uh, the bush. See, it's all things I have to learn. So it's focusing on the front bush, which makes the back one blurry. All right. Go there. I don't know. I have to read. All right. Anyway. The camera has <coughs> the ability to be a macro camera, like go really close into an insect's world, you know, look at them in great detail, and then it has the ability to look far away. Now, do I know which lens does that? Oh, of course I do. I'm just not going to tell you. I don't know. But um, we'll actually get some footage because it's not just a camera. It's a digital video recorder as well. So... Yeah, a lot of action happening here. I'm not sure what's going on. But I don't know this, so don't film me, just talk. About what? You've got all the stuff in front of you. I'm, a lens, there's lens. Yeah, I know. Lens cap, pair of scissors. Don't know what that is. It's a battery, spare battery, charger. That's the extent of my knowledge so far. Okay, get that off. Oh, let me just do something and so people can see what it is. All right, so... Oh, hello. I pressed the wrong thing. Hello, JP. It's got legs. Do you want to show that thing again? I'll just hold it up. This is, you can see the camera, of course, but then this is the little tripod you can use. You'd use it if you're sitting at a cafe doing a food review on plastic plates and plastic forks. Don't think so. But this is a little bit thing. It swivels around and you can have it on different angles and you can drop down a bit lower. It's got all sorts of wonderful... Oh, Mr. C's legs, here we go. <laughs> Different socks, JP, as normal. Yeah. No, she hasn't mislaid the other socks. That's what she does all the time. 
different socks. Da, 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 da. You call that a leg? Anyway, let's get back to this camera and let's show you some of the things because you people might know. Bit of a glare on there, let's move that a bit. Ran the bloody wrong way, isn't it? For you to read. Okay, Nikon. 70 to 300 millimeter. All these numbers don't mean anything to me, I've got to be honest with you. Here's the top of the camera. Got all those different switches and stuff. Uh, what's that thing here for here? What's that going to be for? That's for a flash. Right, that's for a flash. Here, uh, I don't think I'm getting... Uh... No, I'm going to be too close by doing that, but I'll leave it out. Uh, hello, what have I done? I have no idea what I'm doing. Here we go. Can't get focus. Anyway, there's all sorts of buttons on the back. That's a big display. It's actually turned around at the moment. So it's got a hard protective cover. You can switch it out. Um, I really don't know what things do. I won't get to use this much, trust me. There is something. The Mr. said there was a microphone port, whether it's there or whatever, so you can sound very professional. This really big lens is a monster. You should do, and most of those videos, I'll do some on my channel, but if you haven't got uh, Mystic Angel's channel plugged in, do that, because there's going to be some great footage. We're following in the footsteps of JP across this pilgrimage, where he's been. People will say, did you know JP? And I said, I met him. I met the Messiah in person. What's he like? Never mind. Anyway, so that camera will be coming with us to our trip and when we get home. And it's apparently very good on video. I'm not sure if it does like live streams, but that's not the purpose we bought it for. We do love nature and we certainly will be taking some great videos in those areas too. Casey Nestor? I don't think so. I'm old. Unless, unless I'm actually beamed live to all the over 70 nursing homes, I'm not going to be that, pop, you know, that big on YouTube. This is the little lens. You can see the big bugger on there. This is the little lens. Okay, it says AFP Nikon 18 to 55 millimetre. I'm thinking this is the macro lens. I'm guessing. Uh, and I really am guessing. I don't know. But that's an extra lens. So we have two lenses to take with us. One for real close-ups and one for long, long ways. I think we might even be actually done now with this hangout, do you think, in regards to showing the camera? Because we need to plug in the battery. Or did you yeah. just do that? I've just put it ah, right to charge it. I'm not sure if this camera can go live. Do you any idea? I have no idea. Don't... You know what I mean? Like, we don't know. The answer to that question is not sure yet, but it's not it's not been bought for that purpose. It's been bought for video and photography, but um, if it can go live, that'll be interesting. Um, I don't know, is this Wi-Fi enabled, this camera, does it say? No, we're not. We're not Wi-Fi enabled, so that answers the question no, straight if you, away. If you, if you have a Wi-Fi camera, it's like the GoPro, you have to have the app on your phone and have the phone on as well as the camera. Oh, sounds like she knows so what she's talking just about. It's like double everything on. Could just be bullshitting, though. No, I'm not bullshitting. Then you might as well just use your phone and live stream. So that's the instructions for the lens, is it? No, for the camera. Oh, that's a bit better. The instruction for the lens was the size of a very large Japanese newspaper. I don't know what all that's about. It's I, gonna... I don't know. I'm just trying to read. Okay. <clears throat> all, all the wife needs to teach me in the future is which button to turn on and which button to turn off, and I'll be happy man. Oh, this could be, this could be, this, this actual manufacturer is called Manfrotto. This could be JP's company. You know, he makes mankinis, and now obviously he makes Manfrotto's. Yeah, that's about as big as JP likes to have him with his tripod. So, I think I might go outside and have a cigarette myself. We can continue if you want to, but it'll be outside. Yeah, but I'm not bringing all this out because no point. I can't do anything till 
I make anything related to me, and I even have man cans. Not sure what those particular cans you're talking about, JP. Are they dingly dangly bits, or there's something to do with the bicepitral area? Or the maximus glutamus? Are they cans? Alright, so we're going to go outside and have a, a quiet sea going. Yeah. I'm just going to put that up there for a sec. So it's just gone dark for a moment. Don't panic. Man boobs. You should get those really big gold rings pierced through your nipples, JP. Stop bitching about not having any uh, anaesthetic. Alright, just take it. Bite down on this. New pair of sandals. Look at that. Alright, I'm going to unplug this. And you're heading out, yeah? Yeah, I So that is the camera and the two lenses. I'm pretty sure JP had a good camera. If you haven't been to JP's channel, he started to put up a few videos of his trip. Uh, I think the last one I saw was in Scotland. And he's got Irish video up there. And he'll have a lot more. So while the battery's charging, we'll just go for a wander. Yeah, we're out in I'll tell you what we did today. I think really exciting. We, uh, most people know we're doing extensions, but so we went down to a salvage yard and we found a beaut old French double door with side panels. It's about three and a half metres long. It is about 12, 13 feet in the old language. Beautiful timber, two opening sliding door, uh, two opening doors. And we also found two colonial, you know, one with the bars going across and down, uh, windows that have sash windows, which that's the sash window, the old window, you know, where the, the window slides up. That's a sash window, but these are timber, Jarrett timber with uh, sashes either side. And then in the middle, another really big colonial window with the bars going down. So the sash window will be on each side of the main window. So buy them new, and I'm sure the Americans would never, wouldn't believe what I'm saying, but to buy the French doors alone, like I say, two big doors open up, so it's about, ends up being six feet wide, the opening, and then you've got another two or three foot panel either side of the Colonial. Buy it new, it would be about $15,000 in Australia. I'm not kidding you. Uh, we got it for 2400 salvaged out of an old colonial home. And the that was the French doors, the ones that are going to lead out in the patio, which if JP's lucky, he might have a beer one day and wander through it. But the big one that's coming into the kitchen is the big colonial windows with sash either side, uh, grant, of, grant of roof. Well, actually, not quite the roof because we're building nine-foot ceiling, so what will that be? Probably a couple of feet short of the ceiling but you'll be able to open up the windows like the old sash windows, straight up, straight down. And they were, all together, the French, big French store timbers and the big colonial window with sashes either side, four grand all up. And I know that you, we would have been close to 20 grand to buy it, get them new. That's what it would have cost. So there's a little bit of work to done on them. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of a, you know, rub back, sand clean up, maybe the mechanisms need a bit of work and all that, but we wouldn't spend another grand on fixing them up. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put them in. There'll be a hole in the building, JP. I won't do it by myself, because I'll give you an idea that French door being about three and a half metres long with the doors in weighs like a small car. So it'll be three or four blokes, trolley, you know how they do it on a trolley, each push it in slowly to the wall frame, set it up. So I won't be done by myself, because I'm really strong, but I ain't that strong. Same with the other big windows, so it won't be a one-man operation. But we're looking at other timber windows. We like the old, because the old house has got sash windows. I'll show you that. That window there has the windows that you from the inside you lift up, okay? Both sides do that. Might even keep this old window here, because this is where the big hole's going in the house. So, 
what, what that means. I might use that in my office, actually. Uh, just because it's old doesn't mean it's no good. But we've got another, we've got a big window for the bedroom to get. Want to get a colonial look on that as well. Two smaller windows for the JP's wing, as we call it, JP's wing with its ensuite and big bed. That'll be having, we want a window either side because JP gets blinded by the light early in the morning. Can't handle it. So a little window either side. That'll suit him. And then we're looking at bathroom. What's left? Bathroom and laundry. That's all. Yeah, the JP wing. We'll put it. I'll put that on the door. JP wing. So I'll let no one sleep in there. All the grandkids say, "Oh, I'm sleeping there." No, mate. No, Uncle JP's wing. Repeat after me. Uncle JP's wing. Yeah, that's it. But um. We're looking at, like I say, a lot of people don't realise things like doors and windows in a new house or a, 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 what we do in a reno. They're hugely expensive near. I mean enormously expensive. So, yes, some of the windows we've got, they need a little bit of work, like I say, some of the, bit of this, bit of that. Just, just a case of getting in. I'll get in and do what I can, but I'll get a professional to finish up and give me a great finish on the, on the Jarra. And they got a little bull nose down the bottom, so when it hits the floor, you got this beautiful Jarra bead on the bottom as well. <coughs> and um, a lot of the things that we won't be buying old, unless they're in really good condition. Good day, biker. Is things like architraves, you know, things that go up the side here. That's an architrave. Skirting, which goes down the, from the floor to the wall, might get new, and, and it's not that cheap, but there's only X amount of it you need. So, and we like that bull, um, the skirting that's got not, not just a straight little bevel on it, it's the old colonial type that sort of goes up about, instead of being four inches, this is about six where it goes up and does that little curl. So, you might know what I'm talking, you might not have a clue what I'm talking about. But, um, hang on a sec. It's, um, I built two houses and I'm getting professional builders to build the frame. Why? Because I'm old. I am. Uh, I'm getting builders to jip rock, get the jippies in. Uh, things I don't want to do. I don't even want to paint, but I can see I'll end up doing some painting for sure. Uh, so I'll be in and out doing the things I want to do, and then for the main construction of the building, tying into the old house, ripping part of the old roof off to fit the new section in. That won't be done by me. So I, will, I won't claim that I'm building this house. Uh, I can claim the other two, I can, but I can't claim that I'm building this extension. I'm, I'm gonna be one of the workers in amongst it. Uh, we had a guy come around today, we're gonna have a, you, you're gonna love my front porch, as Americans call it, but a front veranda. Uh, it's gonna be about 10 feet from the wall windows at the front of the house out by about, what's 5.4, 17, 18 feet long, ballast rating. Probably have something like this cladded up to the level of the veranda floor and then just timber exposed. Something little dogs can't get out of because all of our family likes little dogs. No, what happened? I don't know, fell down into the rose bushes. So it's, it's, if anyone's ever built or done renovations, trust me, you, they're, a, they're a great like, yay, and then there's, oh, Jesus, this ain't going to work. That's normal. It never always goes to plan, but all you have to do is minimise the mistakes because it saves you a lot of money. So a big butte veranda out the front. That's where I like to sit outside, and we're going to have a really big patio going on to JP's swimming pool. To be in the end of the swimming pool, be like you know the grandstand at a football match, the JP Stadium. That'll be down the probably the uh, I reckon the northwestern end, JP stand, along with the JP room. So and he'll only stay here once, but we'll get him to leave his fingerprints on the wall or something like that. You know, you can swim in the nutty. I don't care. I don't care going nude, JP. What about you? you st sit in the pool with me, nude, JP. It's not going to bother me, trust me. Wife's not keen on skinny dipping. 
Most blokes don't care. I mean, the amount of times we used to go skinny dipping, even up till I was about 40, I'd... JP's more into watching the nudists. And Biker's uncle built his house. I bet you chipped in and gave a bit of a hand though, did you, Biker? It's good to be hands-on. I mean, there's loads of things I am doing, but like I say, the major construction, the heavy side of it, I ain't doing. I'm not getting on the roof anymore. Done all that, been there, done that. I'm just too damn old. Um, but there's so much, like, you'll see this. This is the big old veranda, you see that? Attached to the old house. It's very, very good condition still. Probably won't use the uh, tin on top because it's just a plain old white. But I use all the framing. All, all you see, all this framing that's in amongst it. That, that's all good C-section still. And what I'll do is down the end where the pool's going, the JP wing of the pool, I'll have a nice like a little barley area or a nice timber decked area with a big patio coming across to the edge of the pool. So during some parts of the day, and this is a smart move if you're an Australian, have your pool half shaded, that way you don't burn to death during our 45 degree days. But we've got a north to south location block this way. So the sun comes up over there and goes over there. So by mid afternoon, we'll have shade over the pool. Mid uh, Early morning, it shades. It's only the peak of the day. And with a, a nice big porch hanging over the top, it'll look good. The, I'll just turn this around. We put, you can probably see that fencing. That's what we call colour bond fencing in Australia. And that goes all the way around the block. Next door had already had his Super 6 fence. But my fence all the way around is seven feet high. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Not one troll will be able to get in without being notified. We'll have the gun tower about here. No bastard will get in here. And that fencing, like I say, goes all down the back, 20 odd metres and about 45 metres down the side. That was seven grand for the fencing, uh, which I thought was a bargain, to be honest. We got several quotes and that was a good quote. And he knocked it up in about three days. So we're pretty happy with that. I didn't see, I don't see all the right. Please don't think I'm ignoring you. My old eyes. Someone, if, is that Kiwi Steve, is he here? G'day mate, if that's you. I hope you're doing it. The missus is still playing with the camera. You know the. I honestly would just say to Eddie, which Eddie pressed, uh, do, all right, okay, got that. No worries. And then I'll hand it back. Uh, I don't even know what it cost. We paid for the GoPro and as accessories we got with the GoPro. I think, what did you pay? 700 or something altogether for the GoPro deal? I know, the GoPro and accessories for that came to six, but we just six. got a bonus. I've actually got three batteries for that camera now, which is cool. Beauty. So I don't know. Three batteries. Uh, so one was in the box with the camera. Then we bought another. Wait a sec. No, it's fine. Why am I going to move over there? All right. Unusual see here. Super good. Bloody woman wants to. I want to move over there. Oh, because it's, I want to move over there. How many people you got watching? 350. Mainly, mainly the Syrian refugees, but. I had to ask that. I'm not on my phone yet. But yeah, it was good, Steve. Fish and chips were awesome. I fish off New Zealand. You got a similar fish. We call it a, you know what a snapper is. Yeah, that's what we got. The D5600000, whatever it is. Um, it's a Nikon and it's, um, it's got more buttons than you can imagine. Seriously. But I was getting back to when I was in New Zealand, what we had for fish and chips that night was called a North West Snapper. Looks like a normal pink snapper, different type of shape of head, a bit more pointier than a bulbous uh, pink snapper. But the flesh is very firm. And I'm, I'm not kidding you, I, I don't say this lightly, it tastes a bit like chicken. It doesn't taste like fish, it's really firm and Absolutely beautiful. the box again. What I find strange, it's got no USB cable. Oh, yeah. I did this the other day. I've got the cam camera on the right angle. There we go. Oh, is, is uh, Ella in there? Check my knees out. Woo! Anyway. Oh, I, I, I can only do that. 
and, then, and then I can't read. Just, yeah, no, maybe oh. read. I'll get my phone in a minute right now. I want to have a look at this. So put it on so you can read. Oh, this is the little tripod she's going to set up for you. Okay, well, I'll turn the camera on you when you get that set up. Yeah. Hello, Annette. But yeah, so exciting. We've got this uh, new camera. This is the tripod thing that she'll show you in more detail. It's really flexible. Like if you say you want to, you know, you're doing a, a typical, uh, you know, food review, like you're eating off plastic plates using plastic forks and knives, you can tilt the camera down to look at the plate. Yeah, actually put it down that spot that goes all the way sideways. You lost me. Hold it. Hold it. Hang on. Oh, let's put it around the camera so you can see what you're doing. Oh, so it goes all the way around. There you go. Yeah. And then you tighten it so it So then you tighten it up and then you can have your camera way out there. But generally... <clears throat> I like don't that. know what this on the side the switch is. I don't know what these... I, pull. I, I know think what they're... Oh, oh, look at that. Here we go. Little extenders. I knew that. Oh, so that can be like that. I'm going to show you a bit better. That's what it can do. So that's quite versatile. But this thing here, I don't know what it does. The other thing is just put it all back together again for me and show you can, how you can hold it like a... It's not a gimbal. No. At all. But it, this one's actually got a bit of stabilisation in it, hasn't it? Uh, don't know? Not, not sure. like we want. So you, you can walk around and hold it like, you know, with the camera if you wanted to. Instead but, of holding your hands up with the camera. But see that there? What's that? I'm showing you, I don't, it, it's showing how... Oh, it's showing you how, you, it's showing you the, the spread of the legs. Yeah, but why have a switch there when it doesn't lock it? I don't understand, that's what I'm trying to work out. Right. I don't know. Yeah, so uh, she's charging the camera up and then we'll do a little video with that and then we'll stick it up on uh, the channel and see what, it, see what you think of the quality. Now, is it 4K? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, it's not. And I purposely did that because a lot of uh, our my phone can't take 4K. Well, I don't know if your phone can. Uh, yeah, I can do 4K. But I mean, the thing about 4K. 1080. The truth is, we can't see in 4K. Hi, hi Annette. Uh, humans don't have have the ability in their eye in the apparatus that's actually our eye, we can't see 4K. You do notice the clarity when you're watching something that's supposedly at 4K, but at the end of the day, this is a, a good uh, middle of the road, maybe a little bit cheaper side camera to get used to using fancy stuff with all... changeable lenses. It all came, we got a good deal, came to 600. No, it was more than that. Because we got, we just got the refund from the. That was after the. So refund. it was about twelve hundred. Yeah. So twelve hundred for the camera, the two types of lenses, tripod, SD card, and an extra battery. They didn't know they gave us. Yeah. So three batteries. So that'll come in handy. So, I'll go and get my phone in a minute. So turn it around so you can read. I just. Want to no one's this. writing anything. Yes, they are. Yeah. So that's good. I told them about the windows and doors we got for the extension. Looking forward to that. We can't keep them here because they need to be kept under cover, being uh, jarra. You don't want them getting stained with weather. But uh, I reckon that tripod will come in real handy. Like, it must be, does it do time lapse on the camera? Yes. So, time lapse, so you'll be oh, able to get. Oh, I've worked it out. Uh -huh. So, if you have it there. Hang on, hang on. let me put it on you. Put it, put it on this way. Okay, so Hold it out so I can see it. If you have it there. Yeah. It puts a little cap over there so the legs can only go that far. Gotcha. If I put it over to there, the legs go all the oh, way. Oh, I see. So it can spread really out and be very stable. I can have it. Look, UFO. Oh, just stabilise <laughs> stabilise it maybe when you're doing different thing. I looked at a D5600 bike, it says last week, it was about 649 <coughs> This we got for $9.99. That was the camera, but we got a bit of a discount on that. Yeah, we're talking uh, I know that much. It was, it was 1200 and something, and it was on special for $9.99. I don't know. DSLR. But it, uh, Biker just said he looked at one for six forty nine. dollars got... Where at Biker? Too late now. We spent our money. Because they're 
and I had a look at on the side of our camera it actually says Wi-Fi. There is the what's ours? Five sixty. So yeah, five six hundred. So you've got the Nikon three thousand series, which there's four or five cameras within no, that Barker's series. No, talking about the same one, the five six hundred. Yeah. Are you there, Biker? Hello. I'll take you for a walk if you answer me. <laughs> Wish I need to get the battery charger. Good deal. I'd love a new camera. Yeah, because that's Australian dollars. Bye, car. Hello. Oh, eBay. So eBay as in an actual store or brand new? Yeah, I suppose. But that sort of thing I actually would prefer to go in the shop. I really don't buying, like buying that sort of electrical stuff. No, it was not eBay. Hang on. Um... I personally don't like buying certain electronics over the internet or eBay. I like to go into a shop to actually look at it, which didn't make any difference. I still stuffed up getting a bloody GoPro. Well, we might shoot a cold one. Oh, I thought you'd make a scotch. Yeah, we'll have a scotch. <laughs> we'll get have a beer first, then a scotch. All right, bike is just looking for the info. Just plug in our battery. I think it's working. I, I didn't know. hear a ding. All right, I've got to check the ding. Hang on a sec. I'm going to see if it's counting time. 1,200 and that cost me about 800. That sounds like a flash camera though, JP. What's yours, JP? I missed it. 1,200 DP. Yeah, we got. Yeah, got two lenses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so exactly the kit. That's why you, did, you didn't have that. to get the two lenses, but we did. And, and I ended up with three batteries. Oh, I don't apologise, mate. It still sounds like a good deal. Yeah. So that's that's where you got to sort of be careful. Hey, look. Shirt the shit. How you going? <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Take my teeth out. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, we wouldn't take the best out of anyone, would we? <laughs> oh, it's just been fun. <laughs> you got a time <laughs> to what? think about your mistake. Johnny P. <laughs> so we're going to be like, shit the shit. What do they say? I don't even actually have watched them. I don't know how they carry on. I'll, I'll do, Ricky. Oh. <laughs> oh. Do you, don't fart. I didn't fart. <laughs> wasn't me. Drink and I'll kill you. Mm. I tell you, I love that, JP. Yeah, so the biggest thing with today, we're spending money, but we're not going to keep doing it. I can advise people, but we're working towards these refurbishments about the it's addition just to the gonna house. It's going to take me a while. <laughs> this is going to take me a while. I used to have a, a, a fancy interchangeable lens camera. It's just going to take me a while to bring me back of, like, you know, push this to get this setting and use it properly because uh, at the end of the day, it's the operator that we gives the results as well as the camera. I realise that. But the GoPro was just... Look, action people, great. Uh, on your helmet, uh, as a dash cam. No dash zam. cam. Dash cam, yeah. All oh, that's fine. But anyway, the easy part. I worked out the thingy. <laughs> no doubt but it will take time for you to work out the camera, then I, you can tell me which button to press. I will get a gimbal because of the stabilisation. I haven't come across what stabilisation's on that camera or that sort of thing. Cheers. But, um, yeah, Biker, you get that drink up your way too, I imagine. Two years old, yeah. No, we actually get this in Western Australia, but that's what we've we can only get it, for years. We can only get it from Dan it Murphy's. 54, 55, about 55 bucks a carton. Yeah. So not super cheap, but it's a beaut drop, drop. It's a black beer. So this is one package I don't have to keep because this is easy. I know how to use this now. I put it fully on me. I've got bags under oh, my eyes from not sleeping. complaining, stress. Pam. This face is oh, stressed. Yes. Go out dumpster diving. Yeah, right. That'd be Bar and Park Kettle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
I have to go get my phone. Yeah, the check is going too quick. Yeah, it's too hard to read, yeah. isn't it? I'll, I'll go and get mine. Turn That's all I see. No, I'll go and get no, no, no. I'll have a bourbon in a minute. Bourbon? What sort of bourbon? It's 3.30, I need mean, to go to bed. I don't want you to uh, great, but good night all. Good night. What is that? What are you doing up at 3.30? Are you delivering milk? Is that a net? And that's a milk, eh? Oh, okay. Must be. So uh, the wife's just slipping into something comfortable, JP. She'll be back shortly, don't worry. Hang around. So you can see more of my legs. Right. Go back around there, I'll get bring my portable charger. Because I thought it's crowded. Yeah, I'll tell you what we do, I'm sure a lot of you do it. We don't watch a lot of television, we don't. But then we like a few things that are on Netflix. Netflix is cheap, it's like 14 bucks a month. It's cheap as chips. About the price of hiring a video, I guess. But there's a few shows we watch. I did watch that new series of Ricky Gervais called Afterlife. Black comedy. I thought it was funny. If you don't like that sort of thing, you won't. But it, I find Ricky Gervais' cynical humour quite funny. And a few other, but what, what I'm saying is we'll watch six episodes in a row and then turn the television off for a week. Don't watch it again. Just when we get a whim to do so. Yeah, I will show you how these are going. These have been about a month. Hello, Kathy. These have been about a month in the making. These are tiny little fruit trees. They may look like one. There are two there. And they are a lemon, sweet lemon actually, and a mandarin to go with the rest of the fruit trees we've got down the back. And you can see the extension of the house. Oh no, that's right, we haven't built it yet. But uh, that's what we'll be doing. I'm not sure whether or not we're saying goodnight to you, Johnny, or she's saying come hither. I'm going to bed, Johnny. Do you get it? Just kidding, Annette. Have a good night. Uh, I don't watch a lot of sport. I will watch a game of footy in Australia. We call it Australian Rules Footy. We just call it footy here, yeah, but it's, um, yeah, watch a bit of that. I don't watch, I, I used to play a lot of cricket, played cricket until I was about 42. And when you leave, you leave the game, you tend not to bother going back much. I watch the odd big one, but nothing, nothing spectacular. Oh, that's been good. We went down, Kathy and bought for the extension. We're Hi, going Kathy. to build a big um, French door set up with two big French doors and two panels either side. And we bought a huge colonial window with, on the outside of the big window, either side, sash windows that will go up. You can go back around but there But they won't now. be able to see you then. It doesn't matter. They don't see me. But they want to see you. Hi. I, it You're doesn't the star matter. Of the show. I'm, not, I'm going to get pants on. I'm cold. Righto. She's going to get undies on. She is not wearing undies. Look, quick, look, see? Oh, you didn't catch that, did you? That'll be quick. Maybe on replay. Just slower. <laughs> no, she's wearing knickers. Just made that up. That's okay. I'm sure that she forgives your biker. Yeah, so we had a good day. Um, we're going overseas shortly, so we're sort of tidying up things around. Before we go, weather's cool now. What is it tonight? Oh, you might not think it's cool, but we do in Australia. That is cool. Okay. Now in America they say, oh, put a jumper on. But here, that is cold. A certain centigrade. There we go. 22.9. That is cold. Yes, you've got to have a minimum height of 1.4 metres. I think that is in the old language, about five foot. But we'll have a glass panel for a pool that we're doing. You talk while I'm rolling the smoke, man. What am I saying? I don't know. Make it up. Hi. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I might. When we do the video here and the, and the little chat comes up, it doesn't stay long. No, that's why I'm getting my yeah, phone and on. Yeah, and then it goes, and I'm, I'm often getting like accused of ignoring people, but no, I just don't see it. Because I'll watch the chat on my phone. But you can go back around there. You don't have to be on it. I'll just leave you on the camera then. I'll go around there. No. 
Savage. Is that you in there? I'm getting in there now. <coughs> Technology. So it's getting cooler in Australia. We've got a couple of hundreds coming up again. That's sneaking up on us next weekend. But that's it. We're, we're done. Like I say, I'm nearly putting my dressing gown on at 75 degrees here. What, what, in the US, what is a hot temperature? When would you say, oh, it's getting hot? What in Fahrenheit would you consider hot? We would consider 100, 104, hot. But 90, warm. That's a horrible photo. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> it's what sells that counts. You know, bringing in the revenue. I think we've made two cents on that video. I can see the chat now. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird, isn't it, bikey? That's like, you can use it for fish and it's okay, but if there's people going in there, got to build a fence. Um, thought of building a, a full enclosure for the pool, but nah. I, I like the idea of being in the open with pavers around, you know what I mean? The biggest part of my house that I'm looking forward to is my outdoor kitchen. We'll have an indoor kitchen, don't get me wrong, but I love cooking outside. That's the main thing that I'm looking forward to. The pool's great, but it's not the be in for me. It's to get out there with the a big hot now. plate and gas burners, outdoor oven, sink, beer fridge. You right there? Yeah, my you legs just pulled twisted. it out, I think, yeah. No. There. I can read the chat now. Katie says 85. Yeah, heat doesn't really bother us. I. <coughs> I don't <coughs> like it when it stays hot all night. That's the bit I don't like. The heat during the day you can escape, but... Yeah, that, that, as long as it's, I suppose they call it enclosed biker. I've seen, I've seen a spa room at someone's place with a bloody roller door. Do you know what I mean? Just the big roller door comes down and hides the, the spa room. Sort of defeats having a spa, really, if you can't see the bloody thing. What are you doing? I'm reading the chat. So See, I said, we, Go we are there, back then. to front on there. Yeah, I know. On, on my screen. My old yeah. neighbour lives in a, on the Nullarbor Desert and she says heat's worse here in New Zealand. We've been across the Nullarbor. We just came across it four months ago. Yeah. And it's dry. It's the driest I've ever seen it. It's um, planets drying out, that's for sure. One thing we lack in this country is water. We'll never have two or three hundred million people live here because there ain't enough water. What are you doing? Faces. All right. Yeah, it's a nighttime heat, isn't it, Kathy? It's like, like we, we're very lucky. We're very close to a big river and we're also very close to the ocean. So what happens about three o'clock, maybe a bit earlier, we go from like 104 degrees to 80 because the big sea breeze at about 30 mile an hour kicks in the afternoon and all that heat gets pushed away. It's, it's like turning on an outside air conditioner when a, what we call the Fremantle doctor uh, comes in in the afternoon. It's called that because it's like a relief at being a doctor. Yeah, that's the problem about society in general is that you can have X amount of people but you need X amount of water. And if, like, not many people know, Sydney has in the last 10 years had about three occasions that it's nearly run dry. Does that sound disastrous? Well, when you think there are four and a half million people in the greater Sydney area, not having water is a major issue. And then I think we were there, it was drought, and then we came back here and it just filled up to the top. Massive floods through the, uh, the Pean area, the Pean River. But um, we're, we're spoiled here. Like I say, it, it, we, don't, we have had seven millimetres of rain. That's all we've had since the beginning of the year. And people say, oh, that must be, that must be unusual. No, that's normal. We normally get rain sometimes kicking in through a summer storm, but we haven't had any, have we? No summer storms, really. Nah. So we'll get our winter rains coming up from the Antarctic. Big fronts come up. That's how we get our rain. End of April, May, that's when it kicks in generally. Is going to do it this year. We've had, I don't know about you people around the world, but Australia has had its hottest summer on record. Hottest. And yet, I thought it was normal. 
they're the hottest. So if it equates back into the northern hemisphere for their summer, I'd be pretty hot up there. If I had no how to get I know I've seen heat waves through the northeast of America. I've seen that a few times, but they never mentioned in Texas. Texas gets really hot and they go, nah, it's just hot. Yeah, we all take water yeah, for granted in the desert. Is. Yeah. Okay, JP, go. See Come on, mate. rack off. He'll have to go to his uh, <laughs> pole dancing classes. He's got all these young uh, 18 to 30 year old women come around and watch him pole dance. Yeah. So, yeah. what is the time there? Oh, yeah, he's about 10 minutes late. Better take the Vaseline with your kid. Yeah, it's about the best time of the year here. You get two what we call swing shifts in our season, that is now, and right all the way up through to end of May, absolutely beautiful. We're talking perfect temperatures, blue skies, odd storm, and then the next best time of the year is the end of September through to the beginning of November. Other than that, we get a little cold June, July and August is a bit cold for us. Not anything minus, but cold. And then, of course, summer goes from about November through to about now. And it's ending now. So summer is our longest season. But we don't get a lot of rain. Uh, in New South Wales, they get floods often. In Queensland, they get floods. Uh, everywhere else gets floods. We don't get floods. And I swear if we had five inches of rain, we'd all be, sw we'd all be canoeing. Five inches of rain wouldn't drain that quickly here. Well, maybe where we are, because we're close to a river, but you know what I mean, in this greater area. Yeah. be massive floods. Your turn to talk. I'm having a break. And here is the news. Uh... <laughs> I've gone blank. OK, now here's the weather. Yeah. 39. Yeah, it's, it's not pleasant, but like I say, it'll probably cool down for your biker. We, we get plenty of them. So what did everyone do today? Yeah, Kiwi, okay, well, yeah, our extreme weather does change. Yep. Get it gets it's so cold at night you need a dressing gown on and then during the day it's like you need the air conditioner on because you're so hot. We had one day here about two weeks ago, Biker, it was 8 degrees in the morning and it was 44 degrees in the afternoon. Yeah. It's, it's like... It's no wonder people get sick though. But just rain. Uh, 6.30 a.m. here. Oh, okay, it is... So what's the temp there? It's 6.30 p.m. here. Yeah, we're, we're half, a, half a day ahead of you. So it's 6.30 p.m. Wednesday evening. Yeah. What will be Wednesday there to now? Morning. It's not like last Tuesday there. It's I know that. I know it's not like a week's difference. Yeah, that's right. That's what happens, Piker. I, I, I've had a couple of cases in my life of pneumonia. <laughs> but basically I don't get a cold Kiwi. or the flu because we eat tons of onions and garlic. Oh, God. Nature's gift. Did you see what Kiwi wrote? No. Today good. I woke up, purchased booze, then drank booze. Typical Kiwi life. Some of us have got to do it, mate. Put in the hard yards. <coughs> 8.30, yep, obviously on the east coast. Yeah. Oh, no, 8.30? 7.30. Queensland. Que yeah. You've got to be Queensland at 8.30. Sydney's three hours difference. It's, um, weather's nice now. It's pleasant to be outside. I'm in pyjamas or I take you for a walk down the road, but I can't. If I wasn't in pyjamas, I would. Queensland, okay. like Western Australia, do not do daylight saving because we said so. Catch you later, Kiwi. No, he said 11... Kiora. No, he said 11.40, catch up, peoples. That's what he said. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, you're out of us. I can still say Kiora. So the camera probably won't pick up the airport across the road, will it? No, oh, the new camera will. 
That'd be interesting. No, but I'm talking while you're live streaming. No, I doubt it. Not a cloud in the sky tonight. There's a real clean, crisp feel to the weather. Shivering at 75 degrees. I can take it round there now. All right, I've been given the boot. Yep. That's it, Giora. I say it a bit differently. I don't really get the dialect right. But mind you, I don't have fresh and chips either. Just kidding, mate. Fresh. We did have fish and chips the other night. Actually, like, like you say, they, bloody beautiful. I like how they say that. We love New Zealand. We've got a penanche for a little area around Queenstown. You know, Kiwi up uh, the top of the hill around Queenstown, a place called Arrow Town. You know, the old town that they do, and they have the old Maori huts and all that. I can tell you one of the most exciting things that I got up when I got to Arrowtown is get to the bakery because they make the best damn pies in New Zealand. And how cute was all that? Arrowtown. Don't little, forget that. Little finches. Yeah, little finches everywhere. A lot we get here, but these were tiny little buggers. What's to Mickey? Mac? Mac? Hey? To Mac. To Mac? What are you talking about? What key was that? I didn't see it. Can hardly see yours. T U and then M E K E. Tumeki. But yeah, Arrowtown. You been up there, Kiwi? Yeah, you know, just above uh, Queenstown. Can I have your tent for a sec? Beautiful old town, bit bit made up. You know, it's it's definitely old, but they've made it into a little type of uh, village. Uh, it's nice, but the bakery, mate, Arrowtown Bakery. If you want to buy a pie, that's the place to go. Too much, I work in bakery. <laughs> well, there you go, Steve. Get, get, get your ass down to Arrowtown, see how good their pies are compared to yours. Potato chips from New Zealand are my favourite. Yeah, they're good. And believe it or not, the place I can buy them is in, is in our local cheap shop. We've actually got a lot of uh, kiwi food here because we've got a lot of kiwis here. And we do actually Perth. have a actual kiwi shop in Perth. It's been on Russell, near the North Island. I must be, must be a bit biased. I think, I mean, I've not been all the way through the North Island, but I think the South Island, if you're not working and travelling around on holiday, it's got a lot to offer. Milton Sound, and all sorts of stuff. We didn't go skiing, but we uh, went up to the top of the, wherever it was, in Queenstown. That was good fun. Yeah, I can't remember what that was called. It's out of town a little bit, not much. You can always put an old New Zealand video together and post it up. Actually, we've got some, haven't we? Yeah. We've got some old New Zealand footage from 2005, Four? something like that. Younger version of Seeds, 15 years ago. <laughs> That'll scare the shit out of you. I think I had black cooler here then. Now, New Zealand's a great place to go. Absolutely fantastic. Anyone on the east coast of Australia, doesn't cost you much to go there. They will definitely take the piss out of you, like we do them. Yeah, South Island, that's how I got the feel. It's Kiwi, it's like uh, the taxi driver we got three or four times. He, he would just take the piss out of Aussies all the time. Of course, we served it back and he loved it. So there's not much difference between Aussies and Kiwis, except we're a bit taller, a bit of better looking. It's just geographics, you know, more sunlight <laughs> because it gets fucking cold in New Zealand. The hills. Yeah, beautiful country, though. If you've ever been to Europe or through, say, the UK, you would swear that in parts of New Zealand you were in England. I'm not kidding you. Lush green fields, similar type of sheep. A bit scary flying into New Zealand, though. Yeah, you come into Queenstown. Queenstown's built between big mountains. Yeah, that was right? scary. And the plane actually comes in and does this first, does that, then it does that, and then it straightens up to land. I'm not lying. If you've ever flown into Queenstown, New Zealand, that's how they land. They've got to avoid that mountain, that bugger. Whoop, look out for that one. But it's good fun. When you get off on the airport in Queenstown, you can see all the mountains behind you. Middle of summer or middle of winter, there'll be snow on top of them. You can see why the uh, movie Lord of the Rings was made there. It certainly is majestic. Must be your turn for a while. We'll take you over to Studio 2. Forgive each other, but got Anzac. Yeah, we have, yeah. 
Yeah. In fact, like I say, I don't know. Last count I had, Kiwi, someone did a statistic. There are 17% of Queensland of uh, New Zealanders in Australia, so they nearly make up 20% of Australia. We're sort of like West New Zealand. And we'll take you to Studio Two now. I have to put that up so I can read it. I can't. Your chat goes too quick. Duty her two. What? I can't oh, read it. Yeah, but you can read that, and I'll tell you what you missed, like I do. You do with me. Only for no. you. No. Oh, the last comment was, we give each other crap, and we do. Do you notice that when we just have these general chats, we have a bit of a laugh or whatever? There's only a handful of people in it. But if I started cursing, say, biker, calling him names and abusing him, and We'd have 100 people in So it. you are siding to the house? Well, yeah. Adding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, she means yeah. adding. But yeah, we're adding to the house. This house is about 9 metres by 81. When was the house is only there? About you could take the empty bottles to the pub feet. and get filled with homebrew. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true, biker. See, that's the. No, hang on, I'm doing that wrong. That's the back of the old house. Like, that's the door I go in, the back door, kitchen window. And then over there's another, no, that was another little setting area. See so this over the other side. And then if I turn this all the way around. Uh, That's the backyard. We're going to be extending out to, hang on, I can't past, hold it. Past that line of that old white shed. We're going past, past there. the shed. Where am I? There, extending out to there. I don't know if that made any sense to you, Kathy. Yeah, so what we're doing, Kathy, is this is a small two-bedroom cottage built in the 1950s. We're adding, oh. adding double more again out the back, and we're going to try and keep the same type of cladding. You see the missus doing the camera work now. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. Doing really well there, dear. Oh, OK. There you go. She's good at that. Yeah, just like the castle movie. I love that movie. Uh, yeah, it so will be two extra bedrooms. We'll have en suites, a office, a laundry, extend, and it'll be dining and then a lounge. Yep, and then onto the back patio, on the JP wing to the pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Won't happen overnight. It will happen though. It just seems weird you got the camera on me, but you're talking over It there. is a big addition, Cathy, but it's because we've got a big family. Uh, our bedrooms are always full. At the moment, they're a bit annoyed because there's not enough bedrooms, but... Because in the house, there's only two bedrooms. A uh, toilet and a bathroom. Um, yeah, so it's... It's a bit small when family comes, comes around. So that'll get done when it gets done. Yeah, that's true. It needs a little bit of work inside too. Windows, they're old push up. Jack Daniel's tart. All right, hurry back, Isa. Bike you. No, take your time, mate. Don't rush your drinks down. No, he's making one. Well, you could make one. Yeah, we're filming the process, Kathy. So when when it's all done, then Seeds will put the video up. Probably split them up because it'll probably be quite big. But we don't want to put videos up now, and then you don't see any more for six months. Sort of that's annoying because then people ask, "What's up to?" When you know? Yeah, so we're just saving them, and then we'll um, splice what needs to be put together, show you yeah. the old and the new. Yeah. Shall I go make a drink then? Alright, I'll have uh, mine with ice. Okay. Do, 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 do. I've got hat here, look at that. It's getting long though. But, I've got a bold spot yet, but I'm sure it's coming. Yes, you have. Shut up. Have I? Yeah, on the back. You mean it's thinning? Yeah. Is there a big board patch there? Oh, 
See, getting a bit thin. Yes, we did, Kathy. We just recently moved here <coughs> just before Christmas, I think. And we had a lot of other things we had to do, but we've done a lot of refurbishment in the house, which will be on video later in the year. Add air conditioners, do a bit of this, do a bit of that. But the big one comes when we rip that wall out. That's uh, the old sash windows from the kitchen. And the kitchen goes back another 12 feet deep and 12 feet wide, but that whole wall comes out and the actual kitchen sink comes out a bit where I am, if you can imagine. No, I built two homes, Kiwi, but uh, I was saying earlier I, I won't be doing the heavy constructional side. I'll be doing all the peripheral stuff, windows in, a bit of tiling, you know what I mean. But when it comes to the heavy construction stuff, the roofing, I'm just too old to get up there and do it anymore. I admit that. But I've got lots of other knowledge that'll save us a few bucks. I built completely my second home. The first time I built most of it, um, well, you can get an aircon. Why can't you get an aircon biker? You can get one in store for about a grand. Pretty good one. Yep, we're putting about seven or eight kilowatt on. That'll be done after the house is finished, of course. Along with the ducted air conditioning to the new section. All the old rooms in the house have got their own air conditioner. Did that on purpose because I don't want ducted through the whole house when a lot of this old house won't be used all of the time. If you only get some people stay in one room, they can just turn the air conditioner on for themselves instead of having a huge ducted system. But out here, it will be ducted from the kitchen all the way through the dining, into the bedrooms, into the lounge. Um, even that's only going to be four and a half grand to do all of that ducted air conditioning. A big processor. No, there's a lot of people that make bullshit videos about how they can run their solar power into the air conditioners. It's not true. You need a tiny old quarter horsepower air conditioner in a very small room. You could probably use it for about six or seven hours and your batteries would be drained. Now, it's all capacity. How you work your solar out is to go back from what are you using to then what you go between what you're using to the capacity of your inverter to your batteries connected to X amount of solar panels. Out of virtually fully solar uh, pan, uh, solar powered home for four or five years and yeah you know what I mean then biker you work within the means of your appliances and if you're smart you would have got more efficient appliances that use less power you got to work back you got to simply work back in the kilowatt hours of what your appliances use like let's say a big telly is 100 watt and how many hours a day are you going to watch it say four well you need to supply 400 watts of power to that telly alone then if you run a fridge, and then if you run a little freezer, extra, extra, extra. Lights don't use bugger all for using LEDs in particular. I had two systems, I bet you have two. Well, I used to run two systems. One was lighting, with the same inbuilt components that was run for the power of the rest of the house, meaning if a battery died in one section, I could pull one out of another. You know what I mean? You, you probably, the only one here knows what I'm talking about. You make them compatible, but you have two systems. It's a fail-safe system. If you have to, like, run a fridge off your smaller lighting system, let's say a 1,000 watts, you know what I'm saying, biker, well, you use the capacity of that just to keep running the fridge until you fix the components up in your bigger system. What did I have? I had 3,500 kilowatts of solar. I had... What was it? I had 12 100 amp gel batteries. 12 100 amp and then I had uh, four 100s into the lighting. That's why I don't make drinks. Don't make ginks. I said drink. She's out of one already. Have a little bit. What did you make there? Turn it around. Well, she'll have to have a little bit. Is put it up the bed for a while. Turn it back on. I can't read if you do that. What is this actually? What are we drinking? Canadian club. Canadian club and cake. That is a nice drink. It's got a little bit of a ooh on it. And she mixes it a bit strong. I'll, I'll have just one more of these. 
Yeah, it's a bit strong. She doesn't really know the measuring thing. It's a bit strong, the drink there. I know, that's what I put the coke there. All right. You want the back There's probably nothing left in the bottle. Yeah, turn it on. Yeah, but we don't drink a lot. But I do like uh, a cold beer on a hot day. I'm sure you can put the Yeah, camera. nice. Have three thirds got the verdict. 15 amp. L yeah, gel batteries. Sure. Gel batteries are much better. What do you want? I'm sure you can flick the camera around and still read the writing, no? If I flick the camera around, I'd just be looking at the table. <laughs> but I was trying to read what Biker was saying. Yeah, have you have you got two systems though, Biker? Have you got an auxiliary light just for lighting and running something else? Or do you just run it into big one system? I had a 5,000 kilowatt on the big system inverter and a 3,000 for everything else. It's got a 3, I used to charge all me everything, charge everything uh, on a panel. You know, from uh, we, we had a solar lawnmower, literally, battery powered lawnmower. Bloody brilliant. Uh, yeah, well, Ozito? Is yeah, it called? Ozito. Yeah. Ozito. So did you read that? Ozzy's got a. Oh no, nice to have a 3,000 kilowatt inverter. Would be nice. Yeah, and they jump up in price from 1,000 is not worth getting. And you, you've got to get pure sine wave, of course. Yeah, lead acid batteries, they're not the best for solar. I mean, discharging and charging a, a lead acid battery, you're always looking for trouble. You boil them some days and then they'll, you know, run out of water and they bug it. But my batteries, like yours, would gel. I could smash them with a sledgehammer and it'd just be glu gluey. They're brilliant. The ones I used were telecommunication batteries that I used to know a bloke in the uh, business. I'm going to those exchanges in the bush. They change them every 18 months. Yet the battery, if you bought it new, is about a thousand bucks. I used to buy them for a hundred because he was told just to get rid of them. Which he did, my way. Uh, I sold that whole system to a mate of mine going off grid in Albany, down south in this state. Uh, I got about three and a half grand for the lot, didn't I? Yeah. He had heaps of stuff. He, he, he got a bargain. That might help a bit. I don't know why you've done that. Why because done it brings it up a bit more, because you're, you're struggling to read. <laughs> 15 hammer amp gels. Yeah, but do you, have, do, you have a, do you have one system and then another smaller system, or you just have one big system? If you've answered me, I apologise, but I haven't seen it. I did it on purpose. Like I say, you know and I know something can go wrong within the me mechanics of a, a solar system. And if you've got the same componentry in two different systems, well, you can pull off uh, a battery. Seven-year warranty. Are they yellow batteries? Or the blue, blue ones, yeah. Biker? Ours were blue, weren't they? Yeah. Obviously, they're the long battery. Probably about... You can't even see what the measurement. Although about probably seven inches, eight inches across, quite tall, heavy duty terminals. They were exchange batteries, relay exchange for towers and stuff like that. But if you haven't got two systems, just get yourself another four 100 amps, an inverter to suit whatever power needs you're pulling off. Uh, but because we had our own solar system, I would often have the neighbours come over and say, your lights are on, how does that work? And they bring all their beer and put it in my fridge. These are six mil, cost nearly 10k. Yeah, I wish I could have got to you earlier, bike, because you can still get these... You know the exchanges I'm talking about, relay exchanges like television towers, radio towers, uh, telecommunication towers, they all have these battery backup storage systems in them. Normally, probably 10,000 amp hours of batteries, only one system. Think about what I'm saying, though, you know what I mean? Like, even if you run 200 amp, two, two, two 100 amp batteries, and run it through all your auxiliary to your lighting, inside, outside, whatever you're doing, that's what I did. But I, could, I used all of that to charge my mobile phones, my laptops, uh, everything. I mean, my laptop only pulled about 40 or 35, 40 watts an hour. So I, I would run that off the lighting system as well. And we had a 24 volt system. The mo that's a good efficient system. The most efficient is to jump up to 48. 
that's that's by far you know 48 volts compared to 12 volts 12 volts you're going to run it you got bigger cable requirements and all that nonsense but um and i've seen people do solar systems and they just forget one major thing they wouldn't know what a fuse is you've got to fuse everything you could have fail safe mechanisms all throughout your solar system you've got to earth your um, inverter along with the panel you've got to earth everything and they go what's that what's an earth yeah, 24 volts, good system. I've always said that. But you know what I mean, Biker? You'll, you'll come across some people that go, oh, I've got no fuses. Works great, though. And you're thinking, can't wait till the house burns down. Or something burns out or back charges through the system and blows up a panel. What's that? What's a fuse? You, you really need to get into it and study and find out and read. And But the truth is, just cover yourself. Every time you put a small solar system together, make sure that everything's earthed. And just build a simple panel and relay everything into an earth and that big I think how big was the copper pipe I drove about four foot copper yeah. pipe yeah straight into the ground that is what I did yeah shunt protectors that's the guy lightning protectors because if something does get hit by lightning it just turns everything off you don't lose a three thousand dollar inverter you don't lose uh, panels because they can actually split and just be destroyed internally um, and of course if you're smart You'll include that in your insurance policy of your house, which I did. I think I added three dollars a month. Uh, I never lost anything, but I covered myself because it is an expensive setup. Have you looked at the new batteries, uh, biker, in regards to things like there's a whole range of them now, from German makes to Chinese made to tes Tesla. There's a whole range of batteries available. They're still a bit pricey. Uh, you have a system which allows you to draw power from your battery bank when you need it, all day, and you work within your means. In other words, biker won't run everything at the same time if his battery level's going down like that. He'll say, all oh, right, I have to turn that off, turn that off. But air conditioners, you, I think you could get away with a room air conditioner biker with eight, and I did the test once, 800 amp hours of battery, its own inverter, and select a, a room that's not that big and you can run that quite efficiently. In other words, you'll get the eight to 10 hours during the sunlight that's, you know, your battery level's still floating. And then for the wee hours, it starts to taper off a bit and then you have a shut off switch. You know what I'm saying? You can buy a shut off on voltage. So when your batteries go down to like 60%, uh, it shuts off. So your air conditioner goes off at three in the morning, whatever. But that's the only way that I would ever do an air conditioning unit is a single room, small room, with probably half horsepower or very small air conditioner. And there's some pretty efficient ones these days. And run it on its own bank and its own panel system. Because you only need to keep cool. People get the mistake that you've got to keep the whole house cool, but you can't be in seven rooms at the same time. So you just keep yourself cool. For those hours in Australia, it's usually between about 11 in the morning till about 4 in the afternoon. It's extremely hot. And if you're in a room like that, well, you can have the computer in there. That'll keep cool. You can be charging all your appliances off it. But it does work. And I know the test that I did on 800 amps worked. It definitely worked. And the, it was about a quarter horsepower. It's a very small old air conditioner. And it did it easily. So I think I could have gone up to about half horsepower, whatever that is in the new. The new air conditioners uh, are very efficient because they have that little slide inverter which starts off slowly. Uh, biker, you know what I mean? So it doesn't do that huge draw current straight away. And we've got three that we installed and I can hear it every time we turn them on. It's like slow run into the power draw, which is exactly what you need if you're running a solar system. You don't want this thump of a massive draw straight away. So that was, that was, uh, Good, it worked, uh, but in a small room. Again, you just got to keep cool. You don't need to keep the whole ca house cool. And by about five or six at night, we used to open up all the windows, let all the cool air in, and that would fix that problem. But I haven't seen many people do it, and I never did a video series on it. I should have done, but 800 uh, amps with, at 24 volts, obviously, you just, you know, you do the maths and then you convert that into a power inverter into an air conditioner it works and what i did was a built a little box outside uh that room undercover outside it had the inverter in it it had the batteries in it switches fuses earth you know what i mean and it did work but 
uh, people that think, and, and there are some bullshit off-grid people that say, oh yeah, you can run it very easily. Uh, no, you can't. If you pulled that off your normal main system, you're a madman. But if you dedicate a system to run an air conditioner, uh, it works. But you've got to be sp specific. <coughs> work out whatever the draw on the air conditioner is, multiply it down to hours you're going to use it. You just work backwards, bike it, you know what I mean? Whatever wattage is being used, convert it from that to, to amps. Yeah, that's always a good fail safe kick in. I, I imagine it's an old, uh, is it a diesel, Jenny? They're pretty good. The old Listers were good, petrol ones, they were good. I don't know if you've got a Lister, they were pretty damn good for backup. It's not, it's not that complicated, but like you'd know as well as I do, people buy a load of shit and then realise, well, I had this once, I was talking to a lady once and she said she was interested in what I was talking about and loved the idea of solar. So she thought she'd surprise her husband on his 40th birthday and bought him a 2000 watt inverter. And she thought she was giving him a solar system. And I said, what did he say? She said, he went, oh, that's good. <laughs> and I said, what about the solar panel? She said, what do you mean? <laughs> she'd watched a video where I had my inverter. Uh, you know, and she's saying, oh, that's good, I'll buy my husband one and we can run the whole house off the inverter without batteries, without solar panels. And she said, oh, all right. I don't think I ever saw her again, actually. I don't know whether she was too embarrassed. You know, great heart, but, I mean, a solar system doesn't consist of just a, an inverter. So yours are pure sine wave. It, you don't have to go pure sine wave, but it's far more efficient in energy consumption and delivery and, lo and loss of power because an inverter itself will use uh, energy when it's not even being used. I think my draw was probably four or five watts even when it was on standby. But I had enough batteries to back that up. Anyway, suddenly this turned in from a camera video to a solar panel explanation. Yep, that's all right. <laughs> I have to study up on the camera if I can, you can do any more. The Turn around the studio too. The battery's got to charge first. What? You're still doing the charge of the battery, are you? Yeah, the first battery. We can talk about... Uh, yes. Pure sine wave for computers, etc. Yeah, there's some things that need it. Some fridges don't like, uh, unless it's a pure sine wave. Wave delivery is smooth compared to the other one because it's square. It literally is a stop-start. Cheers, Ozzy. If we could somehow send you a link and get you on panel, it would be good. I will do a little system. We're going to have solar panels on the house, but I will do a little system above this. We have privatised power companies. Do we have that? Yeah, we've got privatised power companies. Well, the privatised oh, distribution hi, Jojo. companies. I'm going to Brain Doctor today. He is going to evaluate my... Evaluate my abilities of functioning on YouTube. This is Jojo. Tell him he doesn't need to go to the doctor. No, you don't need to go to the doctor. We'll consult him freely. We'll get you on panel, Jojo, and we'll, we'll um, diagnose you. <laughs> yeah, but I will do a little... When I put this down the back near the pool, I'll put, say, two or three panels on top, and I'll do all the outside lighting from a simple inverter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I'll have a time switch for the sunlight. Oh, look, I've got a ray of light here. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Yeah, you can. What? See, that just shows I'm an angel. See? Oh, right. Or it could just be a reflection from the globe above the porch. Oh, no, that's worse. By the time you move it, it drops, so you're going to be careful. See? Told you. It doesn't drop a lot. What's that there? You can't see that. If I push that, can I draw little pictures on the screen? I have no idea what that is. Put the tube on the rear and check my pulse, please. Lie to me. <laughs> 120 over 60. Absolutely brilliant. Blood pressure, fine. Now let's check the brain. Hello? Jojo, are you in there? We seem to have a cavity. Just fill it with plaque. That'll fix it. <sighs> So what you have been up to, Jojo? He's good now, Jason. 
He said, he's, he's, what? he's good now. Ah, good. Things always turn for the best. We can hear the train this late at night, can't we? Yes. Which is probably about a mile and a bit away. Entertain the audience. Sing. I can't sing. You move your lips and I'll sing. What are we singing? <laughs> I got on on the road again. Ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> How are you, Seeds? Who's asking? Jojo. Hello, Jojo. Jo I'm good, my friend. The, ca the, he, the Seeds phone's on me and I've got my phone so I can read the chat because the chat goes too quick on the live stream. So I have to relay to him. Yeah. I'm having a quiet, a quiet drink. Just to calm the nerves. <sighs> nice. Nice. I, you'll have, uh, Biker will have trains soon. Inland rail going to build railway near your property. Ugh. Is that freight train? As in, yeah, freight? Yeah, normal train or... Or freight trains. Well, how's that going to affect your property? We're obviously going to... Yeah, that's a bit of a pain. Well, he needs to run a fish and chip shop on the edge yeah. of his property then, doesn't he? <laughs> that's Biker Aussie that said that. Mm -hmm. well, he's in Queensland. Freight. Yeah, but yeah, it can be noisy. Yeah, see, that sort of thing doesn't actually bother me. We've lived near railway stations, airports, and all sorts of stuff. That actually doesn't bother me, that noise. You get used to it, I reckon. Even traffic noises you get used to. It's relatively quiet here for being in so close to the centre of Perth, really, isn't it? Yeah. You go, you go in another couple of miles into Perth and it's busy and noisy. There's coke there you can add to it, that's what I did. Yeah, it's a bit strong. What do you do? Just have a bit of a guess again? Uh, yeah, I told you, I can't do it. I bought you a dabber thing that tells, tells you how much. I don't know where that is. Not sure, I'm scared. Cannot get any answers. Well, that's not good, biker. So you'll, when you'll generally my... Get, biker, you'll generally get the answer from the developers or the government saying, it shouldn't really affect you at all. There's no need for concern. And we've taken your uh, uh, advice from us. Uh, we'll listen to what you've got to say, and we're going to totally ignore you anyway. Oh, yeah, you can see a little bit of the sky up there. Is that what you're talking about, Jojo? Yeah, because it's actually uh, nearly half past seven. Uh, yeah, I can that, is where the, that is where the sun went down. You can actually do that, because I can read the chat. But I can't. I'll have oh. to hold it. I'll have to hold it. As you can see, the sun's gone down probably half an hour ago. Uh, we normally get absolutely stunning sunsets, but it, the sky is dry. No, we don't get smoggy. That's a sports ground about a mile away. The old camera's struggling to focus with that light that's on there. No, no, it's just a light. No, they won't see his plantation. Kathy's going to walk the dog. I hope the dog's got a coat. That's all I can say. Actually, I'm going to leave it like that because I can't see the chat otherwise. I'll turn it around so you don't want to look at the end of a tin. I was just trying to work something out. But uh, yeah, we get weird. I, I did a little video. I haven't put it up yet of a sunset a couple of nights ago. Absolutely magnificent. Oh, yeah, crimson. You've got one too, I think, haven't you? I have. That was filmed crimson. with the now that's no longer exists GoPro that went back to the shop, Jojo. Yeah. I haven't seen Tucker in a few days. I don't know what's happening to him. Maybe he's all right. Anyone yeah, heard yeah. from Tucker at all? I saw him somewhere today. Did you? Yeah, oh. he's fine. He's probably just resting. Yeah, he's uh, he's doing it a bit tough. Good black Tucker. Bit of fire in his belly, but um, he's a decent enough black. There's lots of good people down in YouTube. There really are. Most of them are good. You've seen them a few hours ago. Good. Uh, there's only a few that I avoid now. I don't go anywhere near them. I just don't. I can't be bothered with the nonsense. People arguing about things that don't matter. You said, I said, she said. What's the point? 
like I say, generally we all do something to get a reward. This is in Monte Carlo at the Baccarat table. Ah, smart man. Play it on black, Tucker. Whatever you do, black's the go. It's true. Statistics show in every casino, black wins slightly more than red. But um, some great people down here. It's like every now and then you've got a good group of people and this bum walks into the restaurant. Smells, stinks, farts, abuses everyone. And he goes. And he comes in every now and then. There's a few of them down here. Uh, I'm no better than anyone else. A lot of people, of, of these type of people, think they're better than everyone. That's, that's not the case. Most of the time it's the absolute reverse. They're nobodies, going nowhere. Yeah, I'm the same Kiwi. It's like, I somehow was in Laurie Green's channel the other day, and I, I'm a blue wrench thing, and I never use a wrench anyway. And I just kept laying jokes on it, because they were all bitching and fighting and carrying on. And I'm saying, it's just like a, a replay of the 1977 lunch break at the Boyd Junior High School, with all these 14-year-old girls screaming at each other, I'll kill ya! And a lot of that reminds me of teenage girls fighting over very unimportant things, but they want to get the last word in to be important. That's what they do. And some of these channels do it all day. And if you can't sleep, you can tune into a channel that's doing exactly the same thing all night. So you can live in total misery and despair watching these channels 24-7. Why would you do that? We all do things for small rewards, like we'll do something in the garden, put rose beds in it. Oh, that looks good. There's your reward. But when you're fighting and screaming at each other and, and calling people names that you don't even know, never met them, never will, and it's all out online war, and let's say you win that war online. What is the prize? Yeah, I'm with you, Kiwi. Yep, it's, it's, there's nothing to understand. It's just a case of perpetual misery for these people that want to dwell in that area of conflict. It, that's what they live for, is conflict. I mean, I don't know how many people I've seen that have hated each other one week, loved each other the next, mortal enemies the week next, best friends a week later, it's like a cycle. It's like you put your white shirt into the washing machine, it comes out pink because some bastards are throwing red socks in. That's what the bottom of YouTube's like. There's always someone throwing red socks in. It's pointless. It's, it, there's, there's nothing to gain. And the simple fact, everyone says, oh, I've got trolls. I said, no, you haven't. They go, I have. I've got three or four genuine trolls. I said, no, you haven't. No such thing as a troll. I'll show you. Click on the name. Block. Oh, they're gone. G'day, Ozzy. Hey, Ozzy. Yeah, that's the way to go, Ozzy. Bit of a love fest. Hey, there you go, Ozzy. I don't know, can you see that, Ozzy? Yeah, this is one she made earlier. Well, I've got real bad bag. I didn't even see that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pointless. I've watched Ozzy go and Ozzy just stirs the shit out of him. Good on you. Because they're silly. They're really silly. I mean, I, I caught the end of a uh, man in the can video today, apparently because someone, and I don't know the whole story, someone is getting a, a, a van, a road trek, and apparently it's his. It's no one else, it's just his. Though he hasn't got the money to pay for it. He wants someone else to pay for it and deliver it to him. But he, it's his. Someone's robbing him of his inheritance of a RV, apparently. Not his. JJ says, when there is... Or uh, one or five people, you can share daily life and have fun and help each other. Yeah, I think the smaller the crowd sometimes, the better. You have a yak, a bit of a laugh. But like I say, getting back to that man in the van who says he demands this van that's not his, doesn't have the money to pay for it. Um, the delusion is very strong. Sad, it's very sad. I mean, there is only misery in the end trial for that person. I told him that the other day, he came in one of my chats. And I told him that you're just going to destroy, destroy yourself. No one's out to get you. You're your own worst enemy. You live in a world of delusion. You won't face your fears. And you just keep rolling along, being scared. Have you noticed that boy in the can never sleeps during the night time? Because his head's snapping off left and right out the window. Make sure no one's to get him. I mean, what life is that? What the hell do you call that? Even prisoners at night used to sleep soundly. But he can't.
Yeah, why well, yeah, give him verbal credit. Jada says, oh, the man in the van, why even give him verbal credit? Oh, it's not a credit. It's it's a sadness. You're building your wife's motor. I hope that has to do with a vehicle. Still waiting to have a cup of tea with you, Ozzy. Here we go. <laughs> Ozzy Shooter. Chuck sees an email and come round for a cuppa. Or we'll meet at a pub somewhere? Or at a pub. We'll meet at a pub. We can do a live stream from the pub with you in it to prove that we met you. Ozzy, you should have said no worries, mate. I was just talking. Oh, we answered biker. Bike. I call him biker. <laughs> well, if you bring the pot, it won't be at the pub. <laughs> I don't know nothing after them down there, smoke pot. No one really cares. Uh, Beautiful weather. 22 degrees is cold, but it's nice. So what have you been up to, Ozzy? Such lag. We're northern suburbs. No. No, we're uh, probably... Well, no, we're not northern suburbs. One of the major suburbs near us, Aussie, is uh, Bass and Dean. That's pretty close. We're in that area. <laughs> I want to ask him what he's up to. Not much. Getting stoned. That's all right. <laughs> we're getting drink. Drink. Getting we're, get, we're getting drink. We're getting drink. He's <laughs> getting stoned. We're getting drink. Hey, you're a bit slow. Jeez, I've nearly finished mine. Oh, well, that would probably understand the alcohol consumption in this house. Oh, thanks. <laughs> mm, Kiwi's been smoking um, weed and supporting KFC. Well, what we had tonight was absolutely... Oh, no, no, I didn't do a video of it. Are you down near Rockingham now, was he? Or are you just down there at the moment? I used to live in Rockingham. Uh, not Rockingham, Mandra. Well, Rockingham's closer to Perth than Mandra. You could get on a train and I could pick him up. Yeah, you could. You could get the train from Rockingham. Say to Bassendine. The Bass hotel's only across the road. Yeah, but to Bassendine and the hotel's just across the road from the Bassendine station. A bit slow. Yeah, he can't read the chat right now, Jojo. I've got my phone in front of me reading the chat and I've seen just put the camera on me. Well, I'm just having a quiet one. <laughs> so Rockingham, God. Yeah, you get on the train in Rockingham. Rockingham, that's drop so exciting. Drop him off at Bassendine and we'll meet him at the pub. That's so exciting. So did you take your van with you down to Rockingham? I got such lag. Ozzy's should have delivering some stuff. Yeah, he's got the van down there with him. Yeah, but Train station can't be too far away from you, Aussie. He's on business down there. Yeah, he knows I mean. The Quinana Freeway is a pain in the ass. Can go to a standstill on the Quinana Freeway. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. That unless you leave early or go late, you get caught in that midday traffic or yeah. afternoon traffic. You just got to say you're on business, Aussie. Oh, we'll catch up with him one time. But he's welcome to come up. We'll buy him lunch. Won't be a fucking steak, though. No, we're not going to buy. Well, Fish and chips, no, mate. If he wants a steak, he can have a steak. But we'll we're, a, that's we'll not a, the. I'll <laughs> we'll get him a, a meat patty from Coles.
Jojo says in order to get KFC here, it costs sixteen dollars to park for three dollar thigh. What? Get Uber. Get Uber Eats. I can't remember the last time we had KFC. It's crap. Oh, I, I like uh, the... Gravy? No, the... Chips? Yeah, the chips, but the little uh, popcorn chicken. Yeah. Give me a fillet of uh, raw chicken breast. Thin it out, spread it out, give a little tap, flour, egg and bread crumb. You don't have a credit card, Jojo, because I said that you need credit. Oh, well. You're going to attach your Uber to PayPal. Yeah, you can attach it to PayPal. That's how we do it. Ozzy, you've never left Perth. Uh, did I read that right? Now, there's an offer you can't refuse. Biker Ozzy said to Ozzy should hit that hill. Fly him over. Yeah, you read it. Oh. Camera malfunction. Can't read anything. Never seen anything on here. Yeah, you love Queensland. Beaut over there. Not sure whether you're, are you south of Brisbane or north of Brisbane, biker. <laughs> PayPal's handy for some things. Um, I use, use it in business. People JJ, pay you me. wouldn't have wasted your money. But Ozzy, honestly, <clears throat> you've never been out of Perth. Oh, Toowoomba's lovely. He could, he could get the train up there, biker. Fly to Brisbane and get the train, eh? Beaut up through Toowoomba. Yeah. We've got a really good country. If you get a chance to come over here, Jojo, you'll love it, mate. You really would. Ha <laughs> ha, Jojo. I mean, I've never been down <laughs> south. But that's no, he's it. been down south. I mean, I've been down south. Good day, Mel. Yeah, you got to Hi, Mel. Get, get to Queensland. I think you get a return fare for about 500 from here to Brisbane. Catch the train from Brisbane to Toowoomba. You'll love it. Up in the hills. Beautiful country. So what's, what's your day today, Mel? Hello, Mel. Mrs. Seed, she says. Yeah, I said hello to her. Yeah, Sydney's terrible, mate. Being... Jojo, Sydney's not a representation of Australia, really. I know you've got to. No, it's just no. like any big city around the world, actually. No, it's good to go visit these places. Yeah, Mel's in Perth. We often compare weather notes. It's raining here and it's not raining there. Oh, that's right, yeah. No, it was actually it was a beautiful day today. Did you get off at Central Station, Jojo, the railway station? Did you ever get off there? Because that's like a kaleidoscope of the world's <laughs> planet. Every oh, race is in, in Central Station. That's not a good mail. What? I went to the city on the train full of tweakers. Mel, what have you been doing? we got a pretty good train system in Perth, though. Got a good crowd of air conditioning. And bus. Bus is really cool. Actually, on our buses, you can plug in your USB for your phone. Yeah, because one pretty guy flash. did it and left his phone and I had to call after him. Yeah. I bet a lot of people leave their phones on the bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty similar. Yeah, Melbourne's all one-way streets, so it's a pain in the ass. You have to come to WA. Our city's built really well. You can ask Mel. You can get anywhere within half an hour. You know, we've got about three million people in the greater area. You can get anywhere because our freeways were built before the suburbs. Smart move. Yeah, I can just pick a Mel, around about 20 to 25 years old, backpack, head spinning. Music gown with the headphones. Uh, there's no tweakers in the bush, they wouldn't survive. I catch the red bus to my arm physio. What's wrong with the arm? Yeah, yeah, Poms generally believe all that shit. It's funny. We're going to England. First thing I'm going to say, Kiwi, when I get into a pub, g'day. Mick Dundee from Australia. How are you? Is the beer free? <laughs> Might work.
What have you done to your arm, Mel? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, in the city though. Red, blue, get... cat buses cost you nothing in the yeah. city. They hop on and hop off. Yeah, the, Ooh, the nasty. cat buses. nasty. You must be a sporting girl, I'd reckon, Mel. That's the only way that would happen. No, forget it, Jojo. I'll have a vehicle you can use, drive around with. No drama. Don't tell me, Mel, netball. Don't tell me netball. My girls played netball. Terrible game. Ankles, knees, tendons, shoulders. Netball is a shocker. Oh no, not one of them. Mel, don't do that. They do. In the city here, all the homeless people get on the cats. Uh, blue and uh, white cat. Uh, I think a yellow cat as well. Or red cat. There's a red cat as, as well, isn't there, Mel? Yeah, you will. Uh, you'll fall in love with my state, but don't tell anyone, because everyone will want to come here. Oceans like uh, aquariums, clear water, no smog. People that actually walk past you in the street and say, here you go. Yeah, they always say it's going to be fun, but do you know the best exercise in the world is walking. Plus you get to see stuff, like a tour, on your two flat feet. We'll be doing enough of that shortly. There's a couple of places we're going. I'm not real keen to go up and down these big castle keeps because they're huge. Seas, we're organising a camping trip for real with Aussie Shooter. Want to come? Well, we're shooting off in about three weeks. When were you thinking of doing the trip? Mel's <coughs> 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 going camping. Take an Aussie prepper. Oh, you're going to take Aussie prepper with you? Must be going down south, I'd reckon. Are you going to Margaret River or something like that? Oh, Aussie shooter, sorry. <coughs> this is Opus, I can't see the chat when it happens. Wellington Dam, yeah, that's cool. That's brilliant, Wellington Dam. Mundaring Weir's a good spot. I'll tell you what you should do once, Ozzy, is uh, grab a tent, and you, Mel, you might have done this, and go out to uh, somewhere like York, somewhere like that, on the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Avon Descent. It goes for about three days, really, because there's all these stragglers. Motorboat go down this little river, and canoes go down it, you name it. Uh, some people have tried it in other apparatus, like, you know, blown up tyre tubes. Just fun day. Take your barbecue, enough ice to last at least a couple of days. Sit on the bank of it. There's plenty of places where you can actually camp on the bank of the rivers and watch this. Uh, just Google it, Mel. Avon Descent goes for quite a long distance. Goes through a lot of districts. Yeah, yeah, Northern's a good spot. You can see them go through Northern as well. Uh, it's a great weekend because they always hold it like starting on a weekend. And the stragglers come in Tuesday. <laughs> but, it's good fun. Got a few mates and you're sitting on the bank, got a tent to go slide into. Here we go, Kiwi Stiefs camping trip with Aussie Shooter. Arrest warrant, armed offenders. No. Nah. Smoking pot's not a big deal in this country. It'll be legalised shortly. But you can just have a good time. Jazz is going to bring a mulcher, just in case. Is that for chopping up the good stuff, Mel? Yeah, well, you know about it then, Ozzy. It can be a rough and tumble affair, particularly if we have, and we've had a bit of a drought this year, so it won't be, won't be high tide going down the Avon. But those sort of things, they're good. Don't cost you anything. Mostly, I think, a lot of areas you can camp for free. You just need to have a bit of a sticky beak around. <coughs> camp close to one of the towns, York, Northam. Northam's a great town. They've got good, good pubs, good meals. Maybe what we do is uh, watch a bit of the river for a few hours during the day, night time, go into town, get a counter meal, get an Uber back out to your tent, 
Sounds like a plan to me. We'll take an esky full of steak, sausages, onions, bread, the odd bit of water, and we're drinking that much. But uh, the Avon descent. What a, I, I've missed a bit here. <clears throat> I just should have said my uncle lost a kidney in the Avon. That's a good idea, JJ. Don't think it'll sell that. Don't think it'll sell that well, though. There's not many ass rings left. But yeah, it's, there's, there's plenty of stuff happens. You go down south, uh, I don't know what month it is, I know down the Margaret River, we used to live in Augusta and Bustleton, and they have loads of things happening. Country fairs, good, good old uh, rodeos, have a few of those. Um, racing events, as in uh, car racing, hot rods. <laughs> oh, these shooters not going unless there's KFC. Yeah, it's KFC, Bustleton, you'll get KFC. You won't get KFC in Augusta, though. No. But um, we've got a magnificent coast. You've got to go up and down. I was in, have, have a check it out. What's the time span of your convictions, Kiwi? I mean, I know how it works. I'm an ex-prison officer. What's the time span of your conviction? Was it five years? No passport and all that shit? Is that what happened to you, or...? telling Aussie about a year ago, you can get your convictions, the word is called spent, in other words, it lifts a travel ban, but you've got to speak to the right people. <clears throat> it's not, you can't leave Australia, it's that you can't land in some countries, that's the bottom line. Coffee, now. coffee? Yeah. Good idea. seven-year rule, so it just, it just wipes the slate clean, I guess, Kiwi. One stage in WA, if you got caught stealing fruit and veg from a fruit and veg stand, you lost your passport. I'm not kidding you. It's, and, and then they stop doing that. Normally it's for violent or theft. Theft over a certain amount of money, it's weird. I could have met you, I don't know. Actually, the funniest thing I did, a parole plan for Kiwi, who had to be extradited back to uh, New Zealand, but he had to, he was also given community service, and the community service order outweighed the uh, extradition. He never got extradited back to New Zealand ever. He did community service for 36 weeks, you know, sweeping rows, picking up shit, and he got paid for it. But um, the amount of time he was given commission to do community service outweighed any time he would have actually been on a conviction that he was in New Zealand. So the government said, yeah, yeah, you're right, you stay here. About 17% of Australia is occupied by New Zealanders. I'm not kidding you. They love it here. Oh, from Otaro. Which bike game was he in? Yeah, you can get that spent. Like I was, you need to contact the right people, contact the Justice Department, go through the hoops that they'll put you through, I think you'll find that you'll get cleared. And then the worst thing happens, you've got to pay a shitload of money for a passport, shitload of money for accommodation when you get over there, unless you find a very retiring, uh, admirable, you know, lady in the US who can put you up, feed you. But you still have to have X amount of money for the period of time you spend in that country. You can't go to the US and say, oh, I've got 50 bucks in the bank, I'm all right. They go, you're here for two months. You go, yeah? They go, get on the plane. You're going home. I see you, Jojo. I don't know if I, you're still there. I didn't see him. See you later, Jojo. Australia's no different. You land in Australia with no money, they'd kick you out. I, I, I should have filmed it, but I made lamb shanks. Bloody big, juicy ones they were. Falling off the bone. Mashed potato, plenty of butter. And we had uh, baby peas. It was so delicious, I never bothered filming it. But we ate it. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Lamb shanks, absolutely beautiful. No, tonight the seed's cooked, yeah. Yeah, the Mrs. Cook fried potato last night was good. It didn't happen then, I don't know. What's that? Oh, 
I love I love the lamb shanks. Don't have them often. And they were big buggers too. They weren't little lamb shanks. They were beauties. Red wine. Bit of this, bit of that. Mashed potato. Fall, as I was getting into the meat, it was just falling off the bone. Sweeping up a bit of mash, bit of pea. Bloody beautiful. But it was too good to put on video. The wife will be doing more cooking videos. Oh, will I? Yeah, it'll just be fried potato. Oh, yeah. Every, it'll, it'll be, be called like. Fried Potato <laughs> Friday Night Special. It'll be fried potato with the same thing, onion, garlic, and it'll be maybe a different herb every week, you know, 52 herbs in, in a barrel. Yeah, it does depend where, you, where you're born. It's one of those weird ones, Steve. It's just, you know, some New Zealanders were actually born in Australia, then went home with their family to New Zealand, but they're Australian. They have no trouble coming home because that's their birthright. So if I go to your channel, Mel, you've got cooking videos, eh? I don't know wink, if you've wink. got videos on your channel, have you, Mel? Wink, wink, Mel. Hint, hint. We could catch up for a counter meal, though. Yeah, yep. You just name it, Mel, and we'll be there. How far oh, is Bass and Dean Rail Station from here, Mel? That's, that's uh, not far from here, and we go to the Bass and Dean pub every now and then. Beautiful little pub. Have lunch. You have a cooking group. You're in Mandra. We used to live in Mandra. We used to live in Greenfields. We lived in a lot of places. Actually, actually. I want to go down visit Mandra one day myself. I, I actually love the Christmas shop that's near the water. I can't think of the, the thing now. We, we can come down to Mandra, no drum. We, we used to go to Cicerello's, you know where I'm talking about, Mel, but the other one across the bay, the other fish and chip shop. Oh, Falcon. What, what, what was we, it? Yeah, we were in Greenfield. Yeah, she's on the north side. Uh, Cicerello's we've been to, and then the fish and chip on the other side of the bay. Remember what it was called? No. Um, no. One, one that's in, actually in the marina, you know, that fish and chip shop. That's good. That's, that's a good the, spot. That's where the Christmas shop is I like to go to. Mm. Yeah. With all the German stuff they got yeah. in there too, yeah. But there's some good places to eat in Mandra. The Mandra Mall was being built when we left. That must that's have been three I'd or four like years ago back, now. Yeah. And that's going to be a monster of a place. That's what I'd like to go back and see. It's a new shopping centre. Tuby keeps timing me out. Who the hell's Tuby? Tuby? Who's Tuby? Nino's, that's where it is. Nino's, that's it. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good feed. Fair price. Yeah, it was actually... Good food. We started to go there to, more to Nino's before we left because uh, Cicerello's actually was starting to get not very nice fish. Yeah, no, I, I love cooking too, biker. It's one of my passions, cooking and growing fresh veg. Oh, uh, okay, biker. <laughs> oh, one of those. That's a pain in the ass. I don't know how you stop that. It happens to me sometimes. But, um, yeah, the fish and chip shop at Nino's, that's probably, that'd be my number one in Mandra. Cicerello's are okay, don't get me wrong. But Nino's is better. You get in Mandra, which is a little city south of Perth, you can actually ride up in your boat, right, right to the edge of the pier, and a guy will come out of the fish and chip shop and give you your order. It's true. I'm not making that up. And the the, the chocolate cafe. That's me, Cicerella. That's nice. Yeah, I don't really like that. It's a good walk along the board. We used to walk all the way up to the old bridge, which I think's gone now. Yes, yeah, I want to see that too. Cause all that we used to walk different. up to the old bridge and further, and go across that, and down the other side of the river. You know, those floating pontoons they got on the other side, Mel, which is your side, Falcon side. Um, is it? Yeah, Falcons. As you go over the bridge, is to the left, going yeah. going further south. And then there's that pub we went to. Where was that pub? Which one? Well, we had the big schnitzel, Mel. Oh, we've been to that many pubs. Oh, you got to go under now. So they kept the old walkway is what you're saying. Just removed the bridge and kept the walkway. No, I've had a hangy before. I used, I used to play sport with Mary's Kiwi. Bloody oh, beautiful. Yeah, had them yum. I went with them once. We had to go out of town about 30 mile to get bloody stones, river stones. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that was my first hangy. That was about in the late 70s. And I played sport with these guys for like 30 years. Sounds like Mandra's changed heaps since I raised, I used to raise pigs for them. I had three and a half eggs and I used to raise, they want two pigs a year, family gatherings, you know what I mean? So they'd get, I'd get a pig up to about 90 kilo, and they come around and 
do the business. They always give me a hundred bucks. I said, no, that's, that's good. They, they used to bring the food out to the pig. Yeah, I have to check that out, Mel. But, um, yeah, I've been to the hungy. Beautiful. People don't understand how that pork gets so tender. Uh, cooked that way. It's splayed open, put on, stones, covered. And, yeah, well, the problem with most hungies I've been to, Steve, is that I'm nearly pissed by the end of the time I start eating. You know what I mean? Seven, eight hours, ten hours later. I went to my first one saying, when's that going to be ready? And they said, be a while. <laughs> Absolutely, it was a while. It was about eight o'clock at night. But yeah, nah. New Zealand people are good ping. They're good people. Actually, they they prefer. Uh, and Steve can correct me, but they prefer domestic pigs for the for the hanging. It's a bit too. There's a, I've, I've eaten wild boar myself. It's okay, but it doesn't go that well in a hanging. You're better off using a domestic. Pink pig, if you know what I mean. That's what they, they, they used to ask me to raise them for them. <coughs> but, um, yeah, all that area, Rockingham, Quinana, it's okay, but man, it's busy. You know, Bell Divers, all that area. It's all crowded now. I, I used to, as a kid, come down the coast and there was nothing. Rockingham was a little tiny area. No, no real mandra. All the way down the coast, I used to drive in my old ute. We're talking 40 years ago, though. One thing you're going to get when you're with Maoris is plenty of meat and potato and yam and more meat. One of the ladies said, I'll fill your plate up again. I said, all right, I'll come back with half a pig. I said, yeah, that's good, thanks. Where's the veg? Nah. Yams, potatoes, carrots, you name it, they love their veg. Yeah, it's a gathering, isn't it, mate? I mean, like I say, I've been to a lot of, ha of hangi. And <coughs> there are certain days they celebrate, but they'll have a hangi at the drop of a hat. They won't say, oh, we'll wait for that special day. They'll just have one. Someone say, you reckon we should have a feed this weekend? You go, yeah. And uh, as soon as you know it, they come out and kill a pig, take it away. And they say, be there about seven. I go, right, eh? And they're still drinking until 10. And, but the food is just unbelievable. And what most Kiwi women do is, the, or the Maori women in particular, they'll gather all the leftovers and you'll have even a better feed the next day. You name it. They'll mix it all together and make a feed out of it. Nothing goes to waste. Yeah, good people. Like I say, New Zealanders are misunderstood a lot. Probably because some of the New Zealanders I met are from bikey gangs caught in Australia doing things they shouldn't have done. But most of the Maoris I grew up with and uh, played sport with and met their families, they adopt you. And uh, Kiwi knows what I'm saying. You get adopted by a Kiwi family. I thought it'd be you. You do, you get adopted by them. You're a brother. Not in the bikey sense brother. I'm talking about really being treated as a brother. So, and they wanna know how your kids are going and what are they doing. And they're really family orientated. Not like some cultures, but they always say, "How's your young bloke going? What's he been up to? What's his kids doing? How are they going at school? And what have they done?" And questions a lot of Westerners don't ask. Uh, the Marys are very family orientated. They don't mind a drop, though. I'll, I'll give it, they don't mind having a little sip of the old. Uh, oh, that's nice. But um, and I've seen probably three or four fights at Huggies, and it's always family. Uncle seeds, auntie seeds. But most of the fights <laughs> always, and Kiwi I know I say, most of the fights are always family. It's brother or uncle and, you know, nephew. <laughs> Happens cool. all the time. It's over something trivial. Sure as eggs though, blood coming off their face and a couple of stitches maybe pooped in. They're sitting down an hour later having a drink together because they haven't done with whatever it was, it's, you know, had a bit of a battle. Who won, who lost, not important, but they'll have a drink. It's very much Australian as well. I've had plenty of fights, uh, particularly to do with sport, generally on the field, but if it ever got off the field, you'd have a brawl and win or lose, you'd be sitting there having a quiet drink saying, oh, that was a bit stupid, wasn't it? You go, yeah, you broke my lip. I said, oh, well, you did jump into my fist. You're by. That's how we do it. I don't, I don't think um, I've ever seen uh, in Australia vengeance, in other words, like, a family against another family. There are them, there are some Aboriginal families 
that I know have feuds, but that goes back many generations for different reasons, cultural reasons, usually. But in Australia, there's no one that holds grudges against the Rudds, against the McLeods, against the... doesn't happen. <coughs> yeah, no, the Kiwi... Um, any Kiwi you'll meet, particularly if you're an Aussie, you go over to Kiwi, they'll challenge you. And it won't, it, it'll be more intellect than physical, but they'll, they'll try and sort of put one over you. And then when you go, get fucked, they go, all right, you're all right. You didn't fall for it. They like a laugh. Kiwis are funny buggers, not much different than Aussies. And it's something that we've got between ourselves because <clears throat> if someone from uh, Scotland came over or someone from the US came over, uh, there could be a bit of a battle going on. But the Aussies and the Kiwis will push and shove and go, yeah, you want a beer, mate? That's how it works. It is a brotherhood between two nations, but we're separated by, unless it's low tide, Kiwi, separated by a little bit of water. In fact, you know, you can tell New Zealand's part of Australia by the shape of it. Australia, like New Zealand, if you pulled it off, will fit nicely on the east coast of Australia. So they used to be Australians. They're just, you know, distant relatives now. I'll put you back to studio too because I'm going to have a sip of my coffee now. You can have it in front of you, camera. I'm going to go into the You can do a bit of a yip yak. Anyway, there's about 700 people in the room now. 700? Yeah. Wow. They're all using only eight computers. Wow, well, there's 700, so. Some of these people have got big asses. So hit that like button then. What for? I don't give a shit about that. No, I'm just saying, I'm joking. 700 people watching, so. Thumbs up then, come on. Well, Ozzy is in a caravan park and there's about 400 people sitting outside his door watching them. Yeah. So there's 400 of them. Married people always show up with arms full of food, alcohol and weed. Awesome people. <laughs> That's what Bucky Ozzy said. Oh, 721 watching. Okay. Well, where's the friggin' there's only ten, seven thumbs up. Come on. I remember going to a, a party one night and one bloke there. I hadn't met him, I knew the family. I got in there. And he said something uh, like, uh, man, you're ugly. And I said, mate, have you got a mirror? Because you need to check out yourself for a moment. He said, you're all right, come in. Yeah. Just a bit of a test, a bit of a push. But yeah. no, no, anger. just that uh, sullen look on his face, thinking he's serious. And Kirby says, uh, I think we have a unique brotherhood that others don't understand. No, they don't. One day we'll teach you how to play cricket. And Mel's husband always says... That she feeds him like a Maori. Oh, hi, V Mac. Hello, V. Can a Canadian join? Of course you can. Yeah, you get a pass being Canadian. <laughs> you get a pass because you're, you know, you're sort of an Australian and New Zealand, but you talk yeah, funny. Yeah, we've taken you in under our wing. I tell you what, the amount of Americans that have been in this country that I've met who say to me they're Canadian because they, they cop a bit of shit all the time, the Yanks, when they get here, unfortunately. I said, where are you from? Oh, Canada. I said, well, you sound like someone from Chicago, actually. He goes, well, yeah, I am. Oh, Kathy's back. Welcome back, Kathy. How was your dog walk? Well, Sid's at least we spell the same. That was VMAC. Said that. We spell the same. Yeah. I mean. I'm not privy to the previous question. Uh, I don't know. Whatever you said, can it, whatever you said about Canadian. Oh, she's not about, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're about the same. It's just that you guys talk funny, VMAC. Uh, boil up. What's a boil up, Mel? <coughs> Cook up. <coughs> Mel, boil up. You mean, that? To, when you say boil up, to me that sounds like you just chuck everything in and boil it. That sounds horrible. Sounds like a gumbo. Oh, oxtails. Oh, yeah. I like oxtails. Yeah, uh, see, I'm not keen on that. You've eaten them all the time, but I just don't tell you I put them in. I know. I do know. You haven't done it in ages. Gives a deep, rich flavour. Particularly the marrow from an oxtail. Your dog's part chow, so he has a big coat for the cold. Oh. Having coffee. Everything in my house has got a chicken on it. Can you see that? I love chicken stuff. I well, love chickens everywhere. Chicken. Remake has boil ups. Pippi stew. That's seafood. Ooh, I wouldn't know. Pippies. It's New Zealand for sure. Boil Did Kiwi up. say that? Kiwi said no. Yeah, Barker also said it. 
kiwi said boil up is pork, bacon, bones, watercrest. Leftover hangy food. Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather the hungry like than a bot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose it has good flavour though. Oh yeah, you put plenty of seasoning in the hungry. No, boil up. Because Seeds can't see no. the chat now. He's no, getting what confused. I'm saying is that many of the hungies I went to, the next day you go back for another feed from the leftovers in a big boiler. Wee Mac doesn't eat them, but here it's mainly fish used. Oh no, V Mac. It's like bacon soup. That's, That's how Kiwi is describing it. All these people should make cooking videos. Yeah, come on, you lot. Where's your videos? I do pretty basic cooking, but it's always flavourful. Oh. Um. Yeah, mum used to cook something like that, actually. Well, mum used to... Oh, God, I remember when I was younger. I'd walk in the back door and I'd think, what's that smell? And I'd look in the pot and it's a bloody pig's head boiling. Because mum would make yeah, brawn. Pig cheeks and gelatin. Vimak says, believe me alone, my heritage is Scottish. You know what their food is like. <laughs> you take the high road and I'll take the low. You'll be in haggis before <laughs> me. Yeah. Now, oh, Pippi. Ah, oh, now I've Pippi's got it. Shellfish. Yeah. Shellfish. I got it. Yeah, here, I'm Pippi's, a bit slow, sorry. Our Pippi's we catch between the water and the sand. Oh, Where fish head are. smell. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's just just lifting that pot and seeing that friggin' pig head looking back at you. Oh. <coughs> Mel wasn't allowed to leave the table till it finished. Oh my god, I couldn't handle that. Ew. Just vomit over the table, that'll tell them to get See, ready. Mum used to boil up the pig head and whatever, and then she'd make the brawn, like that jelly meat stuff, and then cold and cut it up and have it on sandwiches. I remember eating it occasionally, but nah, I wasn't that keen on it. Yeah, it's amazing what... Uh, I'm not sort of into seafood brothy soupy things, so yeah. Oh god, JP's back. Fish cheeks. Yeah, they're good. Oh, I thought you were being fresh then, saying fish cheeks. <laughs> fish wings, they're good. And the spots of a fish in its cheek and its wings. They used to cut and throw away the snapper wings when they realised people wanted to buy them. I'll put it back so you can read the chat. JP's back. Haggis. Yeah, haggis is okay. I, to right. be honest, I've so, never had haggis. I've never tried it. It's not like... Johnny P has. If I go to a restaurant, I'll order it firstly. But uh, haggis is okay. Depends who makes it, whether it's spicy or whether it's bland. Cod, what? People? Cod tongues, yeah, yeah. They're, they're a delicacy. Oh, yeah, black pudding. Yes, I grew up with black black pudding. Uh, fried potatoes and chuck black pudding in it. That's what mum used to make. Well, a lot of people won't like it, but you know that nice stewy that you t flavour you get when you have a stew and you put in all the meat in and stew it for hours? Most of that flavour comes from the blood. You know, people say that meaty flavour. Yeah, that's true, Kiwi. I think mum and dad used to tell me that as well. V-Max a vegetarian. She's going to raise an army and invade America. All these librarians and social workers will be going marching. They're only built about that wide, though. <laughs> so they have very small spears. And they'll invade the US and take over. The vegan wars of 2020. I don't know how it would have gone in the old days, VMAC. I have nothing against vegetarians, trust me, but I've never seen a vegetarian that is, uh, and there are exceptions, but are like, what do you arm a vegetarian, mate? I eat 400 carrots a day. No, I know, you're not a vegan. No, there's a big difference between vegans and vegetarians. But I just imagine every vegan that I meet is a librarian. Oh, that's right. Skinny. Yuck. Yeah, my mum mm. ate all that brains. I used to eat lots kidneys, of offal when I was a kid, liver, all kidneys. All that stuff. 
Oh. Didn't know I was getting it, but it was meat. Cooked properly, liver can be like a piece of steak. Not really like a sirloin steak or New York cut or nothing like that, but can be fooled, a bit of onion and gravy. She's a vegetarian. Wow, Mel, that part. was pretty tough. We were allowed to have water. We weren't allowed to have soft drink or anything like that, or not even cordial. Oh well, yeah, cheese is good. Cheese is the reason for living sometimes, let's be honest. Nothing like a good blue vein. I imagine you like a bit of blue vein, VMAC. In your cheeses, I'm Oh talking. yeah, cheese, mm. We're going to be a bit of cheese tasting through Europe, and we'll definitely be doing that. Yeah, lamb's fry. Oh, yeah. no. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Sweet bread. I'm sure you like that too, Kiwi. I used to work in an abattoir and they used to cook it in a knife boiler. You know, when you put your knife into sterilise. So if we go to New Zealand, go to... Get the sweet bread, chuck her in there. It was more than smoke, eh? If we go to New Zealand, go to Kiwi's place, I'm going to let you eat first in case he hands me all this stuff. He'll do it on purpose. <laughs> yes, apple and cheese and pears. I've got to tell oh you, Oh my God, Mel. The match for good cheese is a good pear. I don't mean pear, I mean the fruit pear. Yeah, Pears but, and cheese just work, probably, especially rich, Mel, strong cheese. Mel, you probably cheeses. still grew up a very good person, so... What happened? Like, she wasn't even allowed to leave the table to go to the toilet during a meal. Or oh, it was one of these old rulers over the knuckles, was it? wasn't even allowed to have water at the table or anything, and... Mel must be older than I think, because that's what used to happen to us. She must be 93. Mel, have I seen you at bingo? Eyes down? I mean, we had rules, like... But Mum weren't. Not to, like, our plates weren't that full that it was ridiculous and then try and make us eat us or meat, eat everything. But we didn't have a lot, so we understood the value of what we were getting because we didn't have a lot. But when I brought my kids up, I, I just put small amounts on their plate. As long as they tried everything, I was happy, and I never forced them to eat everything that was on the plate. Yeah, you're right, it's not a big event now in families' houses. don't do that, you know. And also, I don't finish what the kids don't eat. I never did that either. No. We generally let the kids dish up what they want to eat. It makes it a lot easier. The Legionnaires. Wow. You know what Legionnaires are, don't you? Oh, remind me. Algerian French military. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think some of the things that people uh, cook, your dad's missing in action. Dave, your mum was a party girl. Seems fair. The food she would not cook with us. Yeah. But some of the best foods you eat are simple foods, and there's not a lot of different ingredients that go in. Just simple foods. One of my favourite uh, soups is pea and ham soup. It's just yellow split peas and a ham hock, smoked ham hock. Ham hock cooked, two hours, fall off the bone, pull all the meat off, leave the bones in a bit longer, put in the yellow split peas, stir it a bit. Absolutely brilliant. Simple, two ingredients, well, three if you include the water, but two ingredients, that's all it is. And it's my favourite soup. So it's quite interesting listening to other people's stories of how they grew up and what their household was like. Yeah. Because it's like, my, mum was good. I cannot complain about my childhood. It was great. And we lived on acreage, so I had the freedom to go around and do what I want and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, we were made to try and taste everything. We weren't particularly forced to eat what we didn't like as long as we tried it. Um... Most times what was put on the plate, yeah, we had to finish it, but like I said, it wasn't, um, it was just small amounts. Try the uh, yellow split peas, VMAC. Green split peas can be, it's only a slight change in the actual pea, but the flavour can be a little bit bitter, whereas the yellow split peas just add that smokier taste. Um, I don't know, it just works. I've, I've tried both. Don't think I haven't tried the green split pea. done it several times, but the yellow split pea with sp smoked ham hock, like I say, boil the ham hock for a month. No, no, a few hours if need be. So it falls off the bone, take all the pig fat off, scrape all the meat off the bone, put it back into the pot. Yeah, yellow split pea. For me anyway, that's my choice.
So you're a bit of a foodie, Mel. So you've got a food group. I guess that's something like on Facebook or Twitter. I don't do either of those. What is it? Just sharing recipe ideas and what you cook and doing photos of it and stuff like that? <clears throat> Does Mrs. Seeds what? Cook? Mm, occasionally, if that's what you're asking. She can cook, don't worry. But um, I do most of it, because I like it. No, uh, I think she does, but not much. Facebook. I'll tell her when she gets back. <coughs> but, um, yeah, I've done that my whole life, Kiwi. I've always swapped this for that. Nightly picks of food. Sounds good. We've got more lobster here than you can imagine. We call them crayfish. Western Australia is the crayfish capital of the world. I could literally go three mile, walk out, get five or six lobsters, as you call them, bring them out. They're like cockroaches there. And I ate them for years and years and years and years. And now I'm not eating, they don't interest me. Uh, I'd have uh, prawns or shrimp, as you guys call them, but uh, why don't you do some stuff on uh, YouTube, Mel? I'll give you a shout out when you get a video up. Though I'm not a big channel, I'll certainly tell people about you. Well, you're lucky. Obviously, he comes back with a bit of blue bone, bit of snapper, bit of norwest, bit of coral trout. You're doing it easy, Mel. We're spoiled here on the coast for, for seafood. I only post foods of my animals. Okay. We get some big craze here. We get, there's so many of them. They're monsters. Some of the coast that lived here for years and years and years, stay in a little coral reef area. Just big, they call them G's or F's, which, uh, I don't know, three, four kilo. Yeah, I used to dive all the time. I've only ever shot one shark underneath the water because the bugger was trying to get to me, like a dog, little uh, white tip off the reef. So I thought, I've had enough of you, because he was coming in for the little nip and the push, on and off all the time, so I went, <laughs> took a moment, I ate him. Invariably, he's never going to do that again. Shark's good, good, firm, white flesh. Best shark I've ever eaten is Wobbegong. Unbelievable, beautiful flesh on the Wobbegong, and how you fill it from the top of the head, you cut two slices down the spine and you open it up like that and then you strip it out you get these two huge tendrils of meat and it is firm white flesh beautiful but my favorite fish is whiting it's got a sweet taste you need five or six of the bogus to have a feed though yeah yabbies are right you just got to purge them for a few days shoot a bit muddy otherwise I used to have a creek, I used to catch heaps of them, and then I'd just stick them in a big old child's swimming pool. And I'd put a bit of sand in one quarter and run a little air filter, and they'd just shit out all their mud. And after about three days, and you cook them up, then they're good, because sometimes you'll eat a yabby and you go crunch, crunch, crunch. Not good. Fresh bread roll, all right, crispy bread roll, opened up, butter, copious amounts of butter, fresh yabbies laid in the middle. A little bit of mustard if you like, or one of your favourite chilli sauces. Beautiful. Crayfish, mm, because I've had so many in my life, I just don't care for them anymore. I literally can get them any time I like. Ozzy can get them any time he likes. Run a few pots out, a couple of pots will add each. You get a oyster fish for myself and my family. I'd fish from the 11th of December till just before Christmas, in other words Christmas Eve, so 14, about two weeks. And I would have a hundred crayfish in my freezer without any bother. In fact, I had to throw some back each day because you're only allowed, in those days, you're allowed eight per day per person. But I'd have about a hundred in, uh, in a two week period. Easy. And in the end, I'm thinking, I'm sick of bloody crayfish. So someone would come up with a kilo of prawns, I'd give them four or five crayfish. They got a good deal, I got a better deal. I swapped my crayfish for prawns. Have a good day. We're going to knock it on the head in a sec anyway. 
and we shall have a shower, go to bed, all those things you do. Some people will be on here 24 7 though. So, would you like to say good night to the people? Good night, have a good day, night, afternoon, sleep, wake up, work, whatever you're doing. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Nice to catch up with you, people. It's good to have a chat, you know what I mean? I don't mind doing these when we're just having a yak back and forth. And I'll eventually get set up and I'll invite a few people on panel so I don't have to talk as much. That works for me. So wherever you are, have a good night. You're on the East Coast, on the West Coast, in America, Canada, wherever you are. Enjoy whatever.